Welcome. These are What's like, up, bitch? These there are... we go. Try it out again. Damn. What's up, uh, ass bitch? <laughs> Hell yeah, you're doing great. Suck my ass, bitch. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's your catchphrase. Suck my ass, bitch. <laughs> this is so good. Welcome. We have a very special guest today. Um, Wait a minute, are you rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. Oh, yeah. shit. Oh, oh, I didn't even, I like didn't dude, even. Dude, you're recording right now? Like, Oh, did I just swore? Can we swear? Yeah. Oh, Dude, hell yeah! It's just us. us it just felt like we were like talking. I didn't yeah, know you yeah, were yeah. recording. Actually, this. yeah, this you guys like, really. This is really candid. It's yeah, you guys just came to my hospital room. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doctors. I'm at the Silver Lake Pedestrian Hospital. <laughs> you know, if you get a certain number of retweets, you get into a. a all access part of heaven when you die. I've heard that. It's like uh, they have like free beverages and cookies and shit. God loves clout. Yeah. I've always said. Yeah, it's like the uh, American Airlines thing. It. Yeah, it's like <laughs> the Red Carpet Club, yeah. United Red Carpet Club. If it's still called that. Sky Mile Rewards Program. Exactly. Yeah, I'm just posting my way to heaven. Well, that it's a weird part of heaven because it's like there's like a couple. There's a couple content creators in there, but then there's yeah. like it's mostly, a 13 yeah. year old that like reposted a video he downloaded off of YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's all he's getting the same treats. And they let the the white guy with the eyes, the really <laughs> eyes in the gift. The guy was oh, in the, the gift. The, yeah, the, like, yeah. They just let he. They're like, oh, let him in. All right. <laughs> yeah. If you become a meme, do you get in? Is that how it works? Oh, the, yeah. the black girl clapping. Yeah, she gets in. She gets in. The one that's like. <laughs> The kid that your future, you're disrespecting your future. Uh, oh, <laughs> it's it? a legend. He absolutely you're gets in. Disrespecting a future US Army soldier. <laughs> he gets in and he's uh, an archangel immediately promoted. I, yeah, I need I need him back for. He's what if the Trump only guy just like makes that kid? To. What if Trump's like uh, I have a special announcement? That kid <laughs> is going to immediately become an officer in the United <laughs> States military. Absolutely. He this should. kid's the real commander in chief. And then he hands the kid a gun. <laughs> <laughs> he just spends all of his time meeting memes. <laughs> President <Yeah>. Donald Trump. <laughs> dude, do your dude, do your Trump. I was so good to meet President Donald Trump. <laughs> okay, listen to what's up. I got to uh, what's up, guys? Barack Obama. <laughs> That's just my uh, Trump, dude. That's huge, huge. Great, great Trump. Yeah. No, that's what we brought. That's what we brought Connor on for. Just to do that voice. Yeah, yeah. We're, I Trump. we're trying to. I was up. It's me, uh, George W. Bush. This is. And one I'm of... here to tell you that I'm going to be in the. We're going to. We're going to be. Uh, doing Iraq. Watch out. <laughs> Watch out, guys. A comfy did 9/11. I think. <laughs> I think. Did 9/11 did Iraq. No, this is this is the number one political podcast right now. Absolutely, and it's you know the I number one today? independent political podcast. Chapo Trap House just got bought by uh by Disney. Yeah, yeah. Disney bought the Chapo Trap House franchise. Yeah, which so is cool because they could not, bring in that's not real leftist shit, guys. Yeah, they got bought, which is cool. They could bring in maybe do a Star Wars crossover. They're fake. They're fake socialists. Well, they, they're part of. They're part of the the DSA is now part yeah. of uh, well, the Marvel universe. Disney bought the DSA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so so yeah. it's an awesome opportunity for crossover between uh, the Marvel universe, X Men, and DSA. Yeah, Avengers, Infinite Infinity War, the Baby Groot, and um, Baby Groot and Larry Baby website Groot destroys are hanging White out. Mouth. Yeah, they're it's, doing a superhero series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all the superheroes are called like Skeleton Thought 5000. Yeah, and they're like, just DSA posters. <laughs> what did you guys want to talk about with Community College? Oh, Does that go anywhere, guys? Just, well, just, the, you know, it's it's a real... Dumbass fucks It's a real around. cast of characters. Yeah. Do you got it's any, a lot of, any standouts? Well, a lot of... I there's mean, a girl the, in my class who said coffee makes me sleepy. <laughs> 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 I think about it like once a month. I... I just had like a lot of there was a lot of anime kids. Oh yeah, there was a lot of like hot topic, like hot topic senior. Like if year I was recruiting kids. for the alt right, I would hit community college. Oh, absolutely, one thousand yeah. percent, yeah. absolutely. Oh, there's a lot of kids that like speak in in memes. Yeah, yeah, like there's like like high think, functioning spectrum people. Yeah, there was like a kid that would wear like a peanut butter jelly <laughs> shirt like very regularly. <laughs> I, the one that I went to was in like a bad neighborhood in Chicago. Oh man! Oh wait, which one? Uh, Truman. Oh okay. It yeah. was in Uptown, and at the time, now it's better. But at the time, it was like 
That was like the one neighborhood on the north side that they couldn't gentrify because the alderman was like, fuck you. But now there's like a Target and all this other shit. But so there was like a lot of like just homeless people like in weirdness. Well, I went to art school, which is like a lot of those same kids, but with like more resources and they're more emboldened. So there's like a few, but it's just yeah. aggressive. They're more avant-garde. Like there was a guy that just dressed as Kurt Cobain every day and oh, he pissed man. me off real bad. I knew but like he wasn't like acknowledging that. Like he just right. very much was, had the exact hair, like everything. But like if you asked him, are you dressed as Kurt Cobain right now? He would probably be really mad. What, what year did you graduate? I graduated in 2010. Okay. So we might've known some people at, Really? Yeah. We should spend the rest of the podcast just throwing Listing names blindly. Names John John Antall, you know John Antall? No. Oh, okay. Oh, but yeah, I like I transferred to VCU and then dropped out after like a month. Like I feel like I transferred to a real school just to prove to myself I could like <laughs> drop out of a real school. <laughs> I was like I got to drop out of, out of a university. My dad was like you either become an electrician or like you go to school. And like yeah. I didn't take the ACTs or SATs, <laughs> and if you graduate from high school in Chicago, you automatically get accepted to community colleges. So I just was like, I'll just do this. Right. How'd you not take the ACTs? I thought they made us. I went to like I didn't take a foreign language either. I went to this uh, Catholic school that's no longer exists. It's the bottom of the barrel. It was like you got kicked out of like all these other good Catholic schools and you ended up at this one. It was Most, like the one the Blues Brothers went to where they like had the nurse of, with a slapped them around. It was like half of the kids there were like from group homes and there was like some sort of weird thing where they got to go there. Like where so the government paid the tuition or something like that. But it was such a bad high school. I went there because they had a like program for people with dyslexia and learning disabilities, but it was just a study hall. It was just a study hall. They didn't. And they also had this thing called activities where there was an hour set aside for lunch. Half of the school (laughs) ate for the first half hour. The other half ate for the second half hour. And for that one half hour, you didn't have anything to do. You could choose an activity. (laughs) And one of the activities was Simpsons. (laughs) So you would just watch an episode of The Simpsons in school. So there was a point in my life where I was watching four episodes of The Simpsons a day. Wait, four episodes? <laughs> one during school, two, it was one at 5.30 and then one at 6, and then one at 10 on Fox in Wait, syndication. What is this? So I went to high school like 2001 and 2005. And so were they making you watch like new episodes of The Simpsons? No, it was like the teacher they, like recorded. It was DVDs? It was like VHS. Like a teacher had one to, episode. It was, there was one, there, there were two teachers who did it and one who cared and like, here's good episodes. And then right. one was like, I don't know. Here's the one they had on Sunday. Just fucking watch it. Shut yeah. up. Oh shit. Can I swear on this? <laughs> I had a, I had a sixth grade teacher, Mr. Musak, who was like, also he would do like local plays and he would either, he'd make us watch him <laughs> acting in acting <laughs> local Honolulu play. Well, you, did you grow up in Hawaii? No, this is like fifth and sixth grade. Yeah, Hickam Air Force Base. Like Damn. I moved around a lot. Oh wow! Were you so, military brat? Yeah. Shit. Yeah. What branch? Air Force. Thank, Air you, for Force Air Force Force. thank <laughs> you for your service. Thank you for your service. You should make people say thank you for your service. I try to. Um, I try to credit his dad as a troop as all the a, time, and he's a troop dad. Yeah, he yeah. doesn't take. My dad was never a troop. Why? How what is he, he do? not a troop? Just say he's. Was he in the Air Force? Yeah. What did he do in the Air Force? He was like a hospital administrator. That's he dude, would you're if, in if the, the Air base Force, if the base was being overrun he'd have to fucking get True. a gun dude mm-hmm. get on a get on a damn plane hell yeah um, can oh, he fly planes so Hawaii did he serve in any of the wars no has he ever killed he never a guy served in a war so he's he can't. was he did in he the military ma- during a war the, yes which which war all the Iraq. Oh, the, the ones that have been going the, on the for 20 the, years. Yeah. The current ones. The, the current sickest yeah. wars. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Did he ever see uh, Three Doors Down perform at like a USO show? Or no. like Darius Rucker? Darius Rucker. Really? We saw Darius Rucker on base, dude. That's so sick. We went to an on base Darius Who's Rucker Darius show. Darius Rucker? Hootie. Hootie. The Blowfish. Hootie don't call the oh, Blowfish. is he a big... But don't call him Hootie. Call him Darius. Oh, is he a big uh, troop? He performs yeah. for the Florida. troops a lot. Yeah, again, your a, foot's on my sorry. foot, dude. Like, country the, I mean, I don't mean to be homophobic or anything like no, that. No. I'm not. I'm. I'll. I'll fuck anything. Our our feet fucked. Yeah, 
Would you eat yeah. a lot? Did you eat a lot of McDonald's during? I'm getting back college? into McDonald's. Yeah. Did you ever eat at Eleven City Dining? Or was that yeah. Place? Yeah. Occasionally. That Wait, place is where really was good. that place? It's right by. It was by Columbia. Oh yeah, that was a hot spot. A lot of yeah. people went and like hung out there at my school. It was that really was like, good. That was that place. That was like a cool guy place. Yeah, I think so. Oh, it yeah, was like it was where people like fucked. went and drank coffee and <laughs> smoked cigs. Um, Hell yeah. There you was a girl at my school named Lucky Shore, but it was spelled Lakeshore. Ooh. Oh, isn't that a sick big. LSD, big Lakeshore Sh- Drive, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Big Chicago name. Yeah, huge. Um, what are other streets in Chicago? Irving Park Road, Western Avenue, Ravenswood, Monroe. Monroe. Yeah. Those are downtown. I don't fuck well, with you downtown. Well, you were... Talking about McDonald's. Yeah, sorry. The, you were that. talking about your McDonald's order. Yeah, now because I've been on the road, I just didn't like, I want the same thing. So I go to McDonald's. Egg, and get Mc, like a, egg McMuffin. Egg no McMuffin, egg. no meat. No meat. Yeah. Because they give you a little slice I like of like how you walked back to that. Like it was a really <laughs> important story that well, we needed. No, like, I was like, wait, wait, wait. We, we didn't catch your so, saying your McDonald's <laughs> order. Hey, so I heard you were at McDonald's recently. Um, Do you should work for the news. <laughs> Hold up, um, you said McDonald's. <laughs> Is that your news voice? Yeah, hold up. Um, yeah, yeah, the McDonald's. Yeah, when did Trump gonna talk about McDonald's? <laughs> that's your, that's that's your Don Lemon. <laughs> oh no, God no, no, don't. Connor, why is that your Don Lemon? That's not my Dom. Dom. Connor, I can't believe you did your Don Lemon impression. On I you. am racist, but that wasn't <laughs> a racist bit. I have other racist bits. That one was dumb guy bit. Um. Anyway, do you go to McDonald's, Jack? Uh, I've do had the McDonald's. Phases. Yeah, I've do had McDonald's, McDonald's phases. Order? No, I didn't do it for like ten years, and then recently, like I've gone through phases. Yeah, yeah. and then I'm recently. a Jack in the Box boy. They're downstairs. Ooh. I, I remember do- seeing a oh news God. like a 2020 report about Rough. E. coli and Jack in the Box. Ah, dude, fuck it, I'll take it. R- yeah, Jack the in risk. the Box feels like grimy. Uh, I'll run the risk. Who cares? Calculated like risk. Like McDonald's, at least it feels like sterile. Yeah, it's like, a, like highly homogenized and like vertically integrated. Right. It Jack can't... in the Box feels a lot more like wild, wild west. Yeah, like than... the franchisee is a little bit more in charge. Than <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. There is some live shit that has gone down to that Jack in the Box. I have an aerial view of that one, so... I've seen some wild shit. Also, <laughs> also like you can see okay, into the well, kitchen from your balcony. No, I could see a lot. Well, you guys have seen the view. You saw yeah, sick. You view. saw like a mini view up there yeah. is more of like the bird's nest. We so check it out. I see, and I've spent a lot of time there, just peeking, thinking, surveying, thinking about thinking, life. Yeah, and so just I'll see stuff on the horizon. Tracing this is a helicopter-based city. This might explain something Sniping. to people. This will explain th- <laughs> something to people that like if anybody. Has questions to follow me on Instagram because I always, it it might seem to people that I am at the scene of a lot of fires and this is a thing I've been accused of being like a, a arsonist, yeah, because I'm always like filming fires happening, <laughs> like, and I'm like there before the fire department. But <laughs> the reality is that I'll see some shit going down. Or in LA, it's a chopper based police force. The choppers get here before the cops, like the police choppers. They'll How many fly choppers in a do they have? A lot. So you'll see the chopper, and if it's close, I'll be like, dude, I'm going to go see what that is. And I'll run right out the door. And if it's a fire, too, because you could just see it in the air. What, it, at run what right point to does, it. what does the chopper do at a certain point? Like, <laughs> unless it's a chase, just keeps they track don't do of the anything. person. Yeah. And they'll circle it until the cops come, and they get the information. At what point are they going to start using drones? Yeah, just start shooting out of the... Oh, yeah, that'd be sick. <laughs> yeah. Someone get lit up by a drone Yeah, on Fairfax. That'd be tight. Uh, but yeah, the fires, I've seen some good ones. And then sometimes they've just come across like this. Find me. I was driving to go get lunch. Wait. <laughs> good fires. You find you. They just find me. Yeah. One time they found me. Yeah. The fires find me. Uh, one time <laughs> I was just driving to get lunch, not planning on being involved in a fire. And like, I just see like the entire side of the road and this uh-huh. back road near my house is just on fire. And I like, nobody's there. And I like stop the car. And my girlfriend was semi like, what are you doing? I'm like, there's a fire. Like, what's going on? I'm at least going to take a picture. Mm -hmm. And then I went out and took a picture. Then, like, nobody was doing anything. So I was like, fuck, I got to do something. So I tried calling 911. No answer. Like, literally just, like, busy signal. I tried a few times. And I was like, what the fuck is that? So (laughs) uh, flash forward, like, 
somebody like ran a fire extinguisher out to me and I like jumped this fence and I'm like they had it like oh like they, in their house yeah yeah they said yeah, like, oh here's somebody... a white person yeah <laughs> crazy. go in there yeah so I dove over and dude like it is hot as fuck even being like semi close to a real real fire oh yeah so fucking hot and one thing I'll say is that fire extinguishers you think they're gonna do the job do they don't do shit like those things go out so fast it's like five seconds of spraying and it, you're well, it's done. It's like designed for like a pan fire. Yeah. Not for like a house. And this was a big one too. I went, I used two of those and it didn't do shit. The entire side of this like hill was like burning. And then finally the fire department showed up and like sorted it. But meanwhile, like I'm doing this and, uh, and at this point a, cr- a kind of a crowd has formed and like, they're like filming me doing this and just like about <laughs> to die. And meanwhile, my girlfriend's like still in the car, like a couple, like a block up. And it's like not keeping track of what's going on. And I came back like cut up and like burned. She's like, where were you? I was just like, <laughs> like she was not watching the entire thing. It was very hard to explain. Were you the guy in that viral video? The the burning, the, the, the bunny, bunny guy? guy? Yeah, when all these people. Wait, that's, you said fires seem to find you. Mm-hmm. Oh, walking back. Wow. Uh-oh. 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 You Jack. thought you were get, got away from that. Uh-oh. Young, a little stern over here. There's a, there's a, there was a big one recently. A big fire. You trying Jack. to blame me for the, the Hollywood the, Hills fire? The California wildfires. Absolutely the tragic not. California wildfires. My favorite part of that was seeing the like conservative guys on Twitter tweeting about like, has anyone looked into maybe ISIS has started these fires? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll get right on that. <laughs> uh, I had a, our friend Sam Weiner. Yeah. Worked at worked at Groupon in Chicago, and the guy that owned Groupon got invited to a dinner or a luncheon in the mayor's office with the mayor of Chicago at that time, Richard Daly. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he was like, "I don't want to go, Sam. You go." So Sam was like, "All right." And then it was like a huge group of like small business owners and entrepreneurs from with Chicago the with the mayor. And the mayor is like, "Okay, let's let's start a school round. We'll start with you." Uh, the guy like next to me was like, well, "What does your company do?" And the guy was like, uh, I have a company that makes like sprinklers and is like stops fires and stuff like that. And then he like cut him off. The mayor cut him off. I have like, always thought, why don't they make a, like a grenade that, uh, that, uh, you know, sprays foam everywhere, like a fire extinguisher grenade. And the guy was like, yeah, I, I don't know. And he's like, well, it wouldn't work for this and this. And then the mayor was like, hmm, okay. And then like stopped talking. <laughs> and he just like stopped talking. He just walked out he's like of the pissed room. off. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, wait, okay, what happened? So, okay, this is maybe a little... Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I... Wait. Who's knocking Somebody, at the door? Is there so someone, guest? Someone's at the door. Is another guest, Jack? I may have booked another guest. Let me go walk over to the door. Wait a sec. Is that President... Hello? Is Hello? that President George Hello? W. Bush? Hello, it's me, George W. Bush. Oh it's me, God. George W. Bush. Hello, I'm just in town for <laughs> PodFest. What's up, guys? I'm George W. Bush. <laughs> Do you remember 9-11? Yeah, do you remember? I, do. Yeah, I oh. remember it. It's, I remember it Twin like Towers, it was yesterday. Pentagon, <laughs> Pennsylvania, Shanksville, Pennsylvania. I was supposed to be on the flight. What? Really? Duh. Oh my God, the Family Wait. Guy. Wait, who's that? Who is that? So, holy crap, Lois! <laughs> it's me, my ass. It's me, Stewie Griffin. Hey, Stewie. Uh, Stewie. Stewie. <laughs> Are you President <laughs> George W. Bush? Stewie, what's up, dude? I'm a baby, but I'm fucking horny. Oh, fuck. Oh, da, oh, da. Fuck, uh, fuck I my ass. I want to take over fuck the world, my... and I want to fuck. Fuck my ass. Stewie, fuck my ass. Oh, fuck. Oh, 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 oh come in my ass, dude. Oh, bloody hell, I'm about to come. Come in <laughs> my ba- crazy, baby, come guys. in my ass. Baby, oh, come in president God. ass. Peter, uh, Peter, our baby's fucking president. <laughs> Lois? Uh, Peter. Peter. <laughs> uh, George W. Bush, the president, he's fucking our, our baby son, Stewie Griffin. 9 11. <laughs> hey, I guys. Ha- I, have to, I have to go. Yeah, get out of here. You guys are making a big mess I in my apartment. I fucked a baby. A baby fucked me? <laughs> there they go. They're now. Oh, that no. was crazy. You guys we didn't have even to talk during flew off yeah. on, the, on the Lolita Express. <laughs> <laughs> what if the Lolita Express was Marine One? 
<laughs> Technically, there's you can't break a law in Marine One. Is that true? No, but that no. makes sense. Well, <laughs> it's all the big. Con- it's, that's the, the storm. Yeah. Did you see that? Did you guys read that that Trump thing that came out? The excerpt from that book that's coming out. What was he the says that he eats McDonald's because he's afraid of getting poisoned. This <laughs> 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 is like such like a nine year old idea. Yeah. Yeah. He also repeats himself constantly. Oh, I believe that. I mean, like he just tells. I mean, it sounds like my dad. Yeah, any old guy. It sounds. It just sounds like a like a baby boomer who like wasn't a hippie. Yeah, is what Trump is. Right. There He's was Hank also Hill. was that the He's same Hank, book? Yeah, exactly. It's like Queens Hank Hill. <laughs> I was so mad that I never went back to Comet Ping Pong. Oh <laughs> yeah, I've get been a t-shirt. To, I've <laughs> been I've been to Comet Ping Pong. People get, to get fucked, but yeah, also people order to, you at Comet. Ping I went Pong. to <laughs> I went to Co- Comet Ping Pong for a David Liebehart concert. Ugh. Oh wow! Once in like. Yeah, he was definitely 2011. Kid there. Yeah, were yeah. people just like pointing at you and then like whispering to the waiters? <laughs> God, napkin, napkin, extra napkins, <laughs> hot dog napkin. <laughs> yeah. Someone like fully, Can I get a fully hot erect. dog napkin with extra cheese. No, I'm not. I I didn't say anything bad. I don't think I <laughs> nothing said anything Brandon bad says is bad on this podcast. That's a rule he said a couple times. Right? <laughs> nothing he says can be bad. Yeah, so. that's true. Yeah. Cause Nobody's you're, cause you're not you we're both fully white and you're not so yeah no i'm i'm half i'm half p o c yeah so but i'm an irish citizen i got irish passport <laughs> really yeah that's yeah. sick so i'm fucking you're like immigrant. a boondock saint basically yeah I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah i'm the guy that directed boondock saint sick <laughs> yeah no that guy actually lives in this neighborhood and he rages every night so we could wander oh, over there and try to get nice. in his crew if you Ooh. want get in there have you ever popped have you ever like popped in popped your cherry over uh, there? me and my friend uh, who lives behind him have been talking about it for years just like but you never over have now have never... it no it's a lot of just his boys just housing brewskis back there ha- you've seen the documentary up. right no i haven't yet it's like overnight or something but i've seen the movie over 80 times it's got it's got uh <laughs> there's a weinstein weinstein, <laughs> weinstein destroyed his life actually oh, really no. fuck why doesn't he come out and was like see told you Dude, why did the Boondock Saints come at Weinstein? Oh my God! Oh, the Boondock Saints three Weinstein <laughs> edition. <laughs> that would be very sick. Wow! He plays Somebody himself. who's listening to this, give each of us twenty thousand dollars to write that. Yeah, or we just walk down the street and talk to him. Yeah, we'll go over there with a sixer of Anheuser Busch water. And he's probably drinking Ice House. Yeah, <laughs> my dad was the in-house elevator guy at UIC for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, University of Chicago. And we would go to his, he had like an office that he just had a little fridge that had salami in it. Sick. <laughs> and he got fat because he just would sit there all day and eat salami. Slicing it with a big knife? It was pre-sliced deli salami. He also like, we'd go down to Taylor Street and get hot dogs. <laughs> and then he would let us uh, throw out, this is so bad. He'd let us throw garbage out of the car in the <laughs> bad neighborhood. He would Jesus drive through Christ. the bad neighborhood and be like, all right, go ahead, throw out the garbage. <laughs> Yeah, your dad sounds like a legendary Chicago character that I know a few of. Yeah, no, he is. He worked at uh, Robert Taylor Homes. There's an elevator guy there. He had so many. And he worked at the airport. He oh, he's got so many. I don't want to tell, <laughs> tell me. The, he had like an apartment in Robert Taylor Homes, like <laughs> him and like these other in-house elevator guys. And that was like, probably like they smelled place? good. No, like they like if you fucked up as an elevator guy or in the trades in Chicago in the 80s, you never got fired. You just got moved to like a really shitty job. Yeah, right? nobody wanted. Guys. Yeah, and like, so he on uh, somehow he got <laughs> he was an inspector. He got a patronage job as an inspector, and then he got drunk. He was like on a, on a three day bender and somehow he got on the phone with uh, mayor jane byrne and like called her a fucking bitch oh my god (laughs) and she fired him so then he like became a mechanic again Uh, and then he ended up as uh, at the robert taylor homes uh and with the super for the robert taylor homes was like uh i got an extra apartment you guys can just hang out here and not work so he just would like hang out in this like, you know, like him and these like two other elevator mechanics just like sit around and like eat steaks and like hang out and just eat salami and not do anything. <laughs> and then 
and then they would like <laughs> fix elevators and stuff. Like cut up salami or like deli salami, yeah. Like cut up, yeah. Go to the jewel, go to the deli counter and get some salami. Dude, that's a very Chicago type of character. And like people that like are just do shitty things and like you don't even realize it's shitty until like later in life. <laughs> Or like, yeah, I grew up, I mean, you probably did too. Did you ever have like racial slurs against Polish people just in your common language? We had so many, my, like, I know so many Polish jokes. Yeah. Like, and I, it's just, I mean, it's from like (laughs) being Irish and like competing with Polish people for like city jobs. Yeah. It's like all like, it's like, like I grew up, I feel like Chicago is like 40 years behind everywhere. Yeah. Where it's just like the, I grew up in like. 1970s Chicago, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's like yeah. the 90s, where it's just like you're competing with like other white ethnicities. Oh yeah, there's a lot of inner white racism that's really good. Yeah. Well, I'm half Irish, half. My mom's family is uh, yeah, it's like South like, Side Irish. It sounds like the Great Depression. I think they're holding on, but like, yeah, it took me a while to realize that like Polish napkin isn't like a real thing. Or take a Polish. Yeah, which yeah. Is, uh, <laughs> Polish shower. You <laughs> fill up the sink with water. In a rag, and you just wash your balls and ass. Yeah, <laughs> Polish shower, or take a go take a Polish. Uh, I heard in Buffalo, a Polish patio, which is just a garage with like chairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heard that from Jesus. hashtag Joe Para. <laughs> oh, is it, where's is Joe from? Joe like joined the, the Navy. Area? He's in the Navy now. No, yeah, no, he didn't. He's done with comedy. That would be tight. He'd be a troop, just like Brandon's dad. Joe lives in Wisconsin for the Navy. He's training uh, birds how to spot uh, different ethnicities. It's not, it's not, it's just the Navy. It's what the Navy wants. Wait, what are you, what are you looking at? I was looking at other Polish words because I kind of like forget some of the other. Oh, yeah. Do you want to tell your, do you you guys want to tell your best Polish material? Hear about the new Polish inventions? Solar flashlight? Inflatable (laughs) dartboard? Is that like, it's all, like that's jokes the joke. That yeah. 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 yeah that's pretty much the basis of Polish jokes. Here's the ulti- here's the ultimate. You tell about three or four different Polish jokes and then you tell this one, which is you stop and you're like, you know, it, you got to be careful with these jokes. I was telling one of these Polish jokes in a bar and this guy comes up to me and he says, "You don't tell me that joke. I am Polish." And I say, "Hey buddy, I'm half Polish, which is bullshit." <laughs> yeah. And he says, "I don't fucking care." And he pulls out a razor. Ooh. And you're like, "Oh shit. It was okay. He didn't have anywhere to plug it in." Because <laughs> he's a dumb guy, <laughs> Polish people. <laughs> I, also, I I like kind of zoned out when I was like l- reading this, and I just tuned back in when somebody's pulling a razor out on you. I didn't realize it was a joke. I was actually <laughs> really concerned for you. It's like, oh, how are you gonna get yourself Wait, out of this pickle? He didn't. He didn't have anywhere to plug it in. Yeah. So you're no, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, there's a lot of lot of Polish words. My dad will say stuff like, you know, I'm prejudiced. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> like he's like diabetic or something. <laughs> There's a hilarious like South Side dude that like took me up in a helicopter one time. <laughs> um, I was uh, I used to do commercials like I was working like semi low level jobs on commercials. And we were like, doing some like Nike okay. thing. And I was actually like cameraman on this one, I think. Um, but camera person. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucked up, dude. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, it was, it was a long time ago, you know, as things were different. Yeah. yeah. Um, 20 years behind. Right. <laughs> um, so as a camera so you're person hanging out with your, uh, all male crew. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. oh yeah. But they like wanted an aerial shot, but they didn't have the budget to like get an actual cam like camera helicopter. So they just like booked one of those tour ones and called up like they found a place that we're like, yeah, we'll take you guys up. Mm-hmm. We go back there. It's like on the border of Indiana. I, I couldn't believe who was about to fly me in this because it's like this guy in like one of those polo polo shirts that like aren't polo material. It's kind of like slick. I, and has it's a like a dry fit. Didn't know. It's just like a like a phone book search or something. The cr- oh, like the like producer found right. this. It's like a random dude. And he's just like he has like spiky hair and like puka shells. And he's in like a <laughs> silky polo shirt. And he's like, we're like, Oh, are you the yeah? He's like, yeah. When you want to want to go, like, and just I like played he, Vice City. I know how to use the helicopter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. This guy is like, he's in like cargo <laughs> shorts, and I'm just immediately just surprised because I figured pilots would like dress like a helicopter pilot. Yeah, and like we get in, there's like barely seat belts. He's like, I took the doors off. You're just down to like trust him. Yeah, we have this like, yeah, I just went for it. And I had this extremely heavy camera. And so he flies us, dude, too. This dude flies us all around Chicago, and it's, like, super sketchy. 
and I'm like filming, leaning out, and I have an assistant just holding me. Like that's what's keeping me in. He's just holding me, and um, and like this guy's like not helping, and he flies us to the top of the Sears Tower, looking down. It was terrifying, and we had these like headphones in. After we're flying there, we see him turn back, like smiling. He's like, "You guys want to see some fucked up shit?" We're like, what? He's like, you guys want to see some fucked up shit? And we're like, okay, sure. And he just goes like, hooks it so hard, we're like <laughs> sideways. And I'm like hovering. <laughs> I felt like I was like hovering above the city. Uh-huh. And like, he just books it across town. And um, we're like, like where the fuck is this guy taking us? And um, he just is like way deep on the Southwest side. And then all of a sudden he's like, gets excited. And um he starts going low and we're like over this like housing project uh-huh. and um, it's like a u- horseshoe safe and he starts going so low and people are like freaked out and he starts like laughing. It's like this crazy oh, no. like white dude. And he's like, just starts explaining the housing project. He's like, you see, there's only one way in the cops. They come in there. There's nowhere to go. And it's what like, he's fuck? just like laughing, describing this thing to us. And we're like, Okay. And he's like scaring people. That was like a side effect of it. He right. was like flying very low. Like and low like enough for like people in their house. Dude, we were like blowing or... laundry Jesus. and shit. And we're like, what Whoa. is this guy doing? And then like, there was no point to the story or tour stop. We we're just like, he was like, ha, ah, yeah. All right, we'll go back now. And then you just like peel off. And I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, what the fuck was that? And then we just went home. Oh, Jesus and the whole time Christ. I thought I was going to die. It was just like, I have no idea how this guy became a helicopter pilot. He was just like a random, your classic, like, Beverly area, like, south side Irish dude. Jesus. Beverly is, like, racist, like, ISIS ISIS racist camp. (laughs) Like, like the footage of, like, uh, Al-Qaeda training, like, that they showed after 9-11. It's like that. It's like teaching new, like, Irish guys how to be racist. (laughs) Like I grew up the, on the north side, which was like deserted when I was like a kid, and then all of a sudden, at the turn of the millennium, like became gentrified. Yeah. So like, but I'm so glad I didn't grow up. I mean, Beverly, like, my brother lives in Beverly now. Yeah. Does he like it? He like it's just like it's cheap. Yeah. Where like the north side became super expensive. It's really far south. It's so far. South. Yeah. Um, they stopped the parade, right? Yeah, but then they they had like their own. <laughs> they had two. They had two St. Patrick's Day parades. One in was the loop, like Macy's style, like nice. Yeah. They'd die the River Green. Then Southside Irish Parade was like the fucked up one. Yeah, like Rape Fest Parade, <laughs> like <laughs> just like red haired psychos, <laughs> oh, like fucking right? yeah, yes, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like or like Celtic with like some, but like Irish Celtic music instead of uh, Limp Biscuit. I went like two years before they stopped doing it. Yeah. I've like, never been. My brother moved there and it just is like people have porta potties on their lawns. Oh, no. Yeah. Just like people passed out in the middle of the street. Just like the most savage, like fucking <laughs> like truly like, yeah, well, Irish people are like shaved white apes, like just going nuts. Yeah. Just cave in rock gathering of the juggalos. Not, yeah. Just like gathering of like <laughs> patronage psychos but. who've like, Cordoned off all these like and like college jobs. students that want to go down there to just get like ch- cheap drunk, just, get yeah. just like face. hoping people will give them beers, which they do. Yeah, there's yeah. always just like a bunch of fat Irish dudes like on like sitting on coolers and uh. just like like throw people beers. Jesus, especially if you're a girl. And it's so hard to leave once you get there. Yes, it's very far away. You like leave <laughs> wasted. You have to like park like two miles away, and then like. Jesus, you, it's it's a nightmare. I would always <laughs> take the train. I'm surprised you drove. I drove and I didn't drink. You drove and, it was and then a walked two miles yeah. to like just sober. Yeah, Why? me and my brother had a case of White Castle, a Crave case. That's another thing I missed from Chicago too. Why White did Castle. you do this? Just so it was like I'd never been to the Southside Parade. Yeah, I'm Irish, so I was like, I guess I should go. <laughs> and now you're making a pilgrimage to Mecca. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> White Castle, you can get White Castle at the grocery store. Yeah, is it? Are they all closed down? White Castle? Yeah, they're still going. Yeah, I tried to find one in Chicago this time when I went back, and I could not find one. I was very Addison and Elston, dude. Oh, dude, that one's gross yeah. and good. I stole a garbage Perfect. can from that one. <laughs> oh man, that's sick. A White my, Castle. My friend stole can. a Wendy's bench in high school. That was sick. 
Also, my friend stole the bell from the top of my school. That was crazy. Nice. This is turning into like a lot of like old stories. A lot of like, like <laughs> I love college. It's <laughs> <laughs> also like the stories you t- like if we were. Did you ever have like when you were like in your mid teens? Did you ever hang out with somebody who like in their twenties? Well, I started stand up when I was seventeen, so I'd like hang out with all. Yeah, I started. I started. I'm sure that 18s. looked really yeah. normal for the people you hung out with. Just yeah, to have this little all, boy. Following yeah, it was all around. like old comedians. <laughs> This guy, Hampton Yunt, he, like, would drive up. He'd pick me up in, like, his dad's van. And my parents would just watch me, like, <laughs> hop into a van saying that my parents were not oh, asking yeah. any <laughs> questions. Yeah. I didn't like telling my parents anything, so I would always... One time they asked me, like, where are you going? I'm like, my friend Sam's picking me up. This is when I, before I could drive. And then so just... I got in the pattern because I hung out with him a lot. Like, anytime I go anywhere, I'm like, I'm going to hang out with Sam. I'm hang out with Sam. I said it every time, which I was never like half the time hanging out with yeah. Sam. And then finally, like my mom just like sat me down one day. I was just like, Jack, are you gay? I was like, <laughs> <"That's> so funny. <laughs> my mom, my mom asked me if I was gay one time right before dropping me off at school. Like, like, like it over was six fifty five. School is starting in five minutes and she pulls up and then like she's about to drop me off. And she's like, hey, Brandon. You can tell me, are you gay? <laughs> I was like, I got a got a jet, mom. Hopefully, I will be. The, I don't know. Was the, bells, basing, the bells are ringing. Was she just basing that on attitude, just your vibe? Yeah, I think it was just. I think she was like, my son is getting no pussy. <laughs> Damn, this, I this got, motherfucker I got, must be gay as shit. Yeah. And then she called you. <laughs> and then she a was just bitch. disappointed. She was just like, nope, no, he's just my, not. Getting... My son's a yeah. She was like, my son's a, a gay bitch, and I was like, nah, mom, I love. I was pussy. real. I was real fat, like, so I think my parents were like, he's not getting <laughs> pussy because he's a little fat bitch. <laughs> so he must he must not be gay. If he was thin, we'd ask him if he's gay. But <laughs> no, his voice too deep. I got like I think I remember being at a crossroads of like, I would just have to tell them that I was lying or just keep the, be like yeah, me and Sam, you know. But I think I was yeah. like, so like I could both. never imagine hanging out with like a uh, sixteen year old now. Like I guess I could. Right. Like if it was like, yeah, we were like, oh I yeah, know, like shooting something. Like if we if the it comics was like a, I was hanging out with are the age I am now. And like if some seventeen year old comic <laughs> was like, oh like I want to chill, I'd be like, I'm sorry, I yeah, can't. I gotta go. Do they know how old you were? Yeah, they knew that I was like, but that's like in outside of New York, L A. Like. It's different. I yeah, feel like yeah, I think that's true because it's like, oh well, we do the same shows. Yeah, we we all do the same shows. It's not I, was, spread I, was, out. I started when yeah. I was eighteen too, but I also everyone thought I was like thirty. <laughs> yeah, I look like I, I look like I'm fifty, <laughs> and like I've just always have looked old and sounded old. So right. and I was like smoking a full pack of cigarettes. I drove like <laughs> an '84 Chevy Impala. <laughs> I, like, I just really you in. literally just grew up in the '70s in Chicago somehow, like Pretty in a much. bubble. Uh, I like how Brandon, you're um, like all these people that helped you like get your start and like gave you the step ups. Now you're just like thanking them by just being like, yeah, you guys are all creepy. All these people that were like taking me under under their wing and being like, let me uh, give you advice about comedy. I'm like, yeah, you guys are you, all creepy. What the fuck is wrong? Um, okay, um, awkward. Uh, awkward. <laughs> <laughs> um, check please. <laughs> Check, bitch. <laughs> and then I da- and then I dab on him. You invented dabbing. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Is that on your it, no, your meme page? Is that in Kill All Normies? Yeah, that's like the the intro is uh, the intro is all about dabbing and um. Is Harambe there a different word memes. for dabbing? This weed dabbing. The yeah, words. that looks. I that's don't, I it's don't smoke crazy. Weed. I, well, Logan Paul became the worst Paul brother. Yeah, Jake Paul was the which one? I forget which one dabs. Um, I think, I think Jake. Jake dabs. But I like yeah. broke my I I broke my rule this week of like drinking off to Paul. <laughs> yeah, I uh I only jacked off to him six times this week. <laughs> um, Proud. I dude, nothing is cooler than being uh like an adult and masturbating multiple times. <laughs> right it's awesome. It makes you feel productive and cool. That's sick. Uh, I Comedy normally teams. like I hate when like adult men are like, oh, did you see the Logan Paul thing? Yeah. But then once he, there was like a dead body, it was like, oh, did you see the dead body yeah. thing? It I didn't more watch about it. the dead body than Logan Paul. And then it was like, OK, I can talk about this. This is about 
I was one of the early people to see that, and I sent it to you right away. Yeah. Too. I was seeing that in you under saw a that million pre, territory. Pre like dangerous viral. Like you saw pre, that when it was like pre. when only Did Logan they have a Paul shot fans of the body. It. What? Yeah, they had shot yeah. the body. They just blurred the face, but it was like <laughs> I had probably I had probably one like, of the first like big like tweets about gruesome. it. But I made none of the. Was moments. it a hanging? I'm not going to heaven. Yeah, yeah, it was a hanging body. It was a hanging Fuck. body. I'm surprised it blew up bigger It'll than it did. Fun. I thought it was. It's, just, we know like, it's funny. Up. Now we're at a point where it's like it's fine. I don't know. <laughs> like he, yeah. like so much shit has come out. It's like well, he posted a video of a death. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, he's stu- he's taking a break yeah. from. At least he didn't hire the Mossad to like murder people. Right. <laughs> like talking shit about them. <laughs> I've just avoided it so hard. I don't know anything about those That's people. That's lucky. Yeah. I spend too much fucking time reading about missiles and shit. <laughs> You're very smart. Yeah, yeah fucking big, love uh, missiles. Big Raytheon head. Yeah, I'm doing content you, creation you were, for Raytheon. You flew out on Raytheon's dime. Yeah, I work for Raytheon. Yeah. I uh, help them pick the shape of missiles. <laughs> That's cool. Out, like, this would be cooler if it actually looked like this. And they're like, cool. That's sick. Yeah. How long have you been there? Uh, just like two weeks, and they said that <laughs> I'm not going to... They said, we're going to kill you soon. Oh, wow. I was like, oh, fuck. All right. Shit. Well, thanks. <laughs> mm, okay, thanks. You get benefits? No benefits, and I have to pay them. Oh. <laughs> it's a paid internship. Where you yeah. yeah. It's worth it, though, because I was like, you should put three wings on this fucker, <laughs> on the Scud missile. They listen. Yeah, they listen. Like, <laughs> oh, cool. And they well, they listen and they write it down on like a note card and they put it on a cork board and then nothing really happens with it. Yeah, just kind of there. I'm consulting. It's through the WGA. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. WGA yeah. With Jon- Jonathan over there. Who? Jonathan. As West. I'm East guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's great. Sounds like a good gig. Yeah, it is. Pretty. It's pretty fucking sick. Yeah. Do you think they'll ever let you fly a missile? <laughs> what if they started having manned missiles? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like like blow up, ride it like a horse. <laughs> you have to die. <laughs> Something kind of cool about that. I don't know. That's my that's my only uh, hope for this year. Manned so missiles a, is to become a missile. I want to be. I want to be a missile by March. You could fly to North Korea, dude. <laughs> have you met Dennis Rodman? Kyle? Do you remember? I haven't, but do you remember when I they had like the billboard of Dennis Rodman on by I ninety in Chicago? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I they had this like building that's right by the highway in Chicago, and then like during peak Bulls, they painted the Bulls on it. Uh huh. And then they, when Rodman joined the team, they put Rodman on it, and they had him <laughs> sleeveless, and they had his real tattoos, and it was causing accidents. Oh my god! Like tons of accidents. People were mad. People were slowing down to take pictures with like, like physical film cameras. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they were like, "We have to like, we have to paint over this brick That's wall." That's such a Chicago Jesus. problem. Yeah, it's, it's so such a funny. funny. I've do, I haven't been back in a long time. You live there now? No, I'm in New York. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you mentioned that. But uh, I'm a sh- I'm a fucking Sun Times reader till I die. <laughs> you are a lot more Chicago than me for sure. You're pretty Chicago. I've got the roots. I don't have the accent at all. Either. It's been, definitely been twisted up since I moved here. Well, it's yeah, you've been, you've been poisoned by California. Yeah, 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 for sure. But I never You're had the accent. <laughs> we started surfing. That's when you got rid of it. Yeah, dude. I just like pretty much moved here and like, chilled out a lot. <laughs> you know? Would you, would you say I have an accent? Uh, No, you don't. I don't think. Fuck. I mean, but you got every, you can do the I accent mean, well. Everybody has an accent, right? That's the that's woke. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Multiculturalism. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be cool if we were like all the same, you know? I yeah, I don't know what. Yeah, You're, my voice isn't traceable. You you sound like a teen. What? Yeah. No, that's not. I'm I'm grown. I'm I'm like. Even when you youth text, is, it's like this is a teen boy texting no, me. No, what? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm like I'm old now. I'm re. I'm I've, a big boy. I, I'm rebranding as as a mid twenties gent. You're wearing a sweatshirt that says "cum" on it. Yeah. yeah so are you? Actually, I took it off. You yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys it's, gonna have Jay Leno on this? <laughs> yeah. You. We're we're well. We're recording in his garage right now. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. I'm, that's why I'm asking. A real garage. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna start a big Fortune 500 company from here one day. It'll <laughs> all start from my humble garage. Have you guys ever Did watched you? Jay Leno's garage? Uh, no, I haven't. Have you? <laughs> yeah, a big I, watched, I watched a lot of it. <laughs> you watched how much of it? So much. 
Like all of it? Because it was a web. It was like on the web, and then it went to CNBC. Highest, it was on the web first. Yeah, it was like web. It was a web series. Yeah, web. Jay Leno worrying about his web series. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. But you he like the Jay Leno voice. Eh, no, I can't. Yeah, I can't really either. I feel like I could like. I wouldn't. I wouldn't try it out here. Yeah. No it first time. Yeah, no, it's, well, it's so it's, no, it would be weird for any of us to do an earnest impression. Of this <laughs> one of the no, podcasts. absolutely not. If one of us was like, well, now it's time to yeah, like to really actually, yeah. show off my chops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we brought him in with the Stewie Griffin, yeah. George W. <laughs> Bush, you bit, a taste. but now Here's they're ready for the real shit. Jay Leno. <laughs> in the Jay Leno Garage web series. <laughs> There's a part I was watching an episode because it is it is like he talks about these cars. He knows a lot. It's like interesting. And then uh, they're so shittily filmed, though, like the audio is all fucked up. Oh, he no. clearly like didn't care about like the filming yeah. of it. And there's one point where like he's talking about a car and then you hear like a landline phone ring and he like looks off screen and then they cut and they come back and he clearly just like <laughs> went and answered the phone and then like had a phone call. And it's like, OK, let's, let's pick it back up. <laughs> Wait, this is reminding me, like, I hate when people do this to me, but, like, you did, didn't you do a video where you were playing a very specific year version of, like, Dennis Leary or something? Dennis Miller, yeah. Dennis Miller. Holy was the, shit. It was that the, was so mid, damn funny. Mid-80s Dennis Miller. Check it out on YouTube, guys. I'm trying to get <laughs> some Times hits Square and subscribes. Dennis Miller. That was amazing. Hot, hot So bit. dumb, yeah. A very Connor's hot YouTube bit. channel is very consistent. Check Most it out. Of the, I'd say over Check 50% of those videos die with the ca- main character being killed <laughs> or committing suicide also, is the johnny carson video on your youtube or is that like that's vimeo that's different oh damn i love that uh the style of dress of like the 90s comedian and i feel like there's still i enjoy when i see a person that's still kind of like holding on to that look yeah like that's which strong. like pleated Who? pants or jeans in no blazer. there's both and then like the jeans and like leather jacket name names like, uh i leno. don't know but i'll see yeah leno I'll see. Yeah. It's mostly in like comedian like headshots. There will be somebody in just like a leather jacket. Like, I do love stool. like yeah, yeah. Old, Zanies is great for like old headshots. I've never been in Zanies. Like, Dude, there's cool. Zanies that had a few people that like had very aggressive outfits. Paula Poundstone. Oh, Paula yeah, Poundstone's Paula. fits are Paula, wa- if you're listening, Paula please. Paula Poundstone, Fit Watch. Fit Watch. Everybody <laughs> get, Poundstone, everybody get on your watch phone. 2017. Yeah, no, po- like Poundstone, like Come on the she come bought on the pod. Comet pizza. Yeah, no, I ever yeah, yeah. dude, she was she was like What did she buy? Comet she was pizza. on she was like uh on that shit before Wild <laughs> <fits>. <laughs> and she still she's like, Paula, Poundstone, of, yeah. Paula Poundstone invented pedophilia. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, everybody get your phone and just Google image. Oh, yeah. this one's bonkers. Oh, very recent. Also, oh, this yeah. is at the inside Get out in. premiere. That's at the inside out premiere. She's yeah. she's rocking. Two watches, damn. two swatches in that one. I w- I miss when comedy oh, and man. comedians had to dress zany to make people know that their jokes were going to be goofy. That's still that's still what it's like in Chicago though. Is like yeah. I remember like starting doing improv in Chicago and like everyone had a maroon button down that was like two sizes <laughs> too big and like pleated pants and a tie tucked into like super huge like light wash jeans and converse <laughs> hell and yeah like, that guy's awesome and he's gonna be on snl two years <laughs> and like he like just fucked a bunch of 15 year old students and like died <laughs> oh, God. just like the a chicago comedy scene yeah. Comedian. Yeah. like the weirdest guy to me like when i like started doing open mics is like the guy that would wear a full suit to do an open <laughs> mic mm-hmm. and like didn't have a job he was coming from like a guy who like yeah that's like yeah a guy who's like up. I'm serious about comedy yeah and he's like at an open mic and performing for other comics but wearing like a full suit You've, I, very dark this is the first time I'm hearing of that yeah that's like <laughs> it's a guy it's Jesus a guy that exists Christ. that's a guy that exists in most cities God I would say that that is a that is fully a an on open every mic Herald team in at I O in Chicago there was like always a guy that would dress up <laughs> i was at the comedy store recently and saw like a full andrew dice clay set oh yeah, was was like, a, sick. where he was addressing the current, <laughs> oh, hey. the current climate i really like, want to hear what he has to say like the you know people people are mad about the Chappelle jokes but uh 
Dice Clay. He's he's also he's also talking he's about the current. Yeah. I mean, I think it, hey, the I, women's march. What is this? Uh, hey, you know what I said? March your ass to the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, oh. No, it's a lot more. I mean, it's it's that, but very vulgar and mad. Yeah. It's like, really it's so yeah. funny. Not not even being comedy at a certain point. Well, he was he was doing well. Like the joke structure was there is the thing. It was like he's got uh, oh, a yeah, lot of jokes from the eighties that are just the punchline is like a dead gay person. Oh dude. yeah, yeah. That was that came up in the in the Johnny Carson video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The it's that that like faggots joke, which is yeah, so yeah. fucked. It's so insane. Just uh, that there should be a dead gay person. Yeah, stapled to the no, welcome like to Brooklyn was, sign. He was Dice Clay was very out of pocket. Pretty much, if you go watch anything that's over 10, 15 years old, there'll be some wild shit in there. They, uh, if I've been going back and watching like talk shows from the 90s and early zeros, and so many of the jokes are just like, uh, what if a person was gay? <laughs> or like, what if I was gay in this moment? I'm, of course, not, but wouldn't it be funny if I was gay? <laughs> if you watch shows from even a little bit ago, like pre Columbine. There would, in every show, there would be a character that exists to just get shit on. Like, everybody just, like, shits on one yeah. guy. Oh, and, like, in like the post-Columbine Screech. era. Yeah, yeah, like, Screech, Screech or anything. was like, you're weird. Yeah. 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 And then, like, eventually <laughs> we... <laughs> that would be so sick. An episode where, uh, he just starts just dressing in all black. Like, there's, like, a the three-episode arc. All black. Imagine if in old school there was a bit of like Will Ferrell just driving his car through like a crowd of people. It'd be so funny. But like after like now like with ISIS and shit like that, it's like it's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Like that path where that guy drove the U-Haul truck. Like I run down that path. Yeah. And like I'm I'm a hero for even living <laughs> even living in New York City. You're a hero. Yeah. 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 Because you may have, you were almost in. You were kind of a victim of the attack. You ran, I, you yeah, ran down that path. I guess you could say that, yeah, I am. Yeah. I just start telling I'm people that you access. were there. Yeah, I was there. I was, uh, I live, I live, I could take the subway to Ground Zero. You should just be the second comedian that tells everybody that he has survived 9 11. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> just take his place. Take his place because there's room for it now. Seal Renazisi's best bit. <laughs> Um, um, we've been we, going for almost two hours, so we're, we're, yeah, we've done we should, almost two hours. So shit. We should, like, Let's hand over the plugs we should to Connor. Shit. Honestly, what do you got to plug? Anything? Raytheon. Uh, if you're mm-hmm. buying missiles or looking for missiles, please shop at Raytheon. Um, you order online. You can order online. You have to be a government that's okay, allied yeah. with the United States, and um, still, still giving Donald Trump a chance. <laughs> that's understandable. Yeah, still giving him. A, we'll see how it turns out. Give him this four years and just four year chance, <laughs> and then afterwards, I'm trying to get the whole administration on the pod. That'd yeah, be let's great. do it. You we could, already you had George W. Bush. I heard Scaramucci. <laughs> he follows me. He's he unfollowed does. and followed me a couple times. He follows like a hundreds lot. of yeah. thousands of people, but mostly me. I don't get that tactic. I feel like this is going to come out, and the Polish community is going to come after me. Um, yeah, me too. But I've made a lot of Polish jokes in my life, so. Remember I posted something on Tumblr about gypsies and <laughs> the gypsy community. Mm-hmm. Wait, actually, me. yeah, it yeah, they like got they gypsies. got really mad about Borat. Oh yeah. yeah, but Europe people are really racist against gypsies. Yeah, they have a legitimate concern. Like if you, yeah, it's a, I guess it's like a culture yeah. sock thing. If you like well, have some European it, yeah, friends, it'll come up. You're like, wait, what are you talking about? I don't. It was English speaking gypsies. I'm not sure if they were in Europe or the U.S. But I mean, I think it's yeah. It's it's like they got to defend themselves. Well, yeah. It's a, the Roma people. They're like displaced. They're like don't have necessarily have like a home country that are also have you gypsies. Done any, like demographic research of this podcast. Like, what do you think? Yeah, maybe it's, it's just Polish. all gypsies and all girls. gypsies and Polish people, and we just have no more fans. Yeah. After this. They did like DNA testing on uh, Irish gypsies, and they found out that they're a different ethnic group. Hmm. That they're like not. Oh damn. That they are separate. Posers, really. They're posers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Interesting. Fucking um, skater boy poser bitch. So. Oh yeah. We didn't say anything bad about gypsies. Right. Um, to the Polish people. Poles are too stupid to learn how to use podcasts, so we're fine. 
Fair enough. Yeah. Um, satellite, January 14th. Where is it? Satellite, in New York An- City? In Los Angeles. Oh, my God. Who gives a shit, dude? Who cares? You wanted, you you texted me about doing the show, and I wasn't. I came into town, I, and Brandon's like, oh, my God, are you in town? Let me book you, you a show You texted me UCB first. Sunset. You were like, oh, Brandon, I want I wanted to do your show. Please, I'm flying out to do your show. No, 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 And no, no, I no, was no, like, no. what? what's... What's up, Connor? You texted me saying, like, "Look, you um, want to go to Disney World? You want to go to the here, Grove?" I'm here until January six, but I let's go to the I'll Grove. Stay. Let's I'll go stay. to the Grove. I, you were like, "Oh, let me." Uh, I, I'm done. I, I, uh, I'm done. Connor's my friend now. Yeah, yeah. You were late, and we decided. Yeah, we talked. I brought. <laughs> we're I friends brought fucking now. Cookies, dude. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got here first. Yeah, right. and I was even late. Yeah, I was a little late. Do you want to give out your home address? <laughs> <laughs> One. One. No, don't. <laughs> they wouldn't be able to find it anyway. It's too weird no. of an address. It is um, said people have been able to like see Yeah, you could know, like you could see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty recognizable. <laughs> Let's just leave peak. clues. Let's leave clues and then the viewers, they can figure it out. No, I don't want people coming here. Plus, it's a series really of traps. A series of illegal traps that they get caught in. <laughs> um, highly illegal. Um, all right. Well, anyway, Connor, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. I feel thank like you. probably edit this way down, right? Yeah, we'll probably have to. Yeah. But I'm going to keep all the Polish stuff. And I'm sorry <laughs> for all the Polish listeners. Um, hey, I'm half Polish. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know if we've offended anybody else, but uh, I'm running for the alderman of the 46th ward. Um, so yeah, vote for me, guys. Um, to It's That Episode, the podcast where I, Craig Rowan, invite a guest over to my apartment to watch any TV show they choose, we watch it, we talk about it, and we talk about a bunch of other bull crud. Uh, today, my special guest is Connor O'Malley from UCB Theater's The Law Firm. Welcome, Connor. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here and coming to my apartment. No problem. Um, I should say should that... you sitting closer? In your couch? What's that? Should we be sitting closer? No, this is about, for just to give the people at home a picture, the couch is a three-seater, but it could definitely could fit do, four yeah. if you needed to, and we have while watching movies before. Mm-hmm. But we are on completely different ends and could not be – and we're sort of like both we're leaning against – mimicking body language though. Yeah, we are both crossing our legs. Yeah. And but are we doing it the right – nope, now – now we're mirrors. Now we're touching toesies. But I think I've always, when I do this podcast, lean as far back as possible from other people. Yeah, I think that's what you sh- what you should do. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. I should say that you're from, I think this is notable, that you're from Chicago and new to New York City. Oh, yeah, baby. So you're, you're while you're a performer on the law firm, you a lot of your experience doing comedy is in Chicago, which I think yeah. is cool. Pretty much all of it. Uh yeah, done been uh, done been doing comedy seven years and uh, started all up in Chicago. Done been done been done been meaning uh, been been doing been uh, doing <laughs> is is that a real thing? No, okay, I think it is. Isn't that a southern thing? Like done been uh, done been baby done. Been. <laughs> it sounds like a like a product like a done been. Um, so I'm excited to have you here. I am excited to watch what we're watching because. Well, I'll just let you introduce what show we're going to be watching. We're going to be watching the HBO television series Entourage. Ever heard of it? Eight seasons? Yeah. Ever heard of it, idiots? There's a movie coming out. Better get prepared for it. Yeah. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. If you don't know this show, you're probably not a bro or you're not a cool dude or a chick who gets it. You probably never smoke weed. You've never had sex. You don't... You, like, respect women and you... uh, are a total lame, lamezoid. You're a, you're a nerdo birdo. Yeah, you're a nerdo birdo. This is for cool dudes only. Turn this off if you're about to go to a library or if, like I said, you respect women in any sort of way. I'd say this as just a note for the podcast in general. If you're ever listening to it on the way to a library, either one throw whatever mp3 player i don't care if it's just on throw it it's, out yeah it's not an ipod and it's not a phone it's yeah. de- if you're like headed to <laughs> yeah it's like 
You have like a first generation like 1999 yeah. Samsung MP3 player. Then you just chuck it in the garbage because mm-hmm. I don't want you listening to this on the way to the library. No, unless you're going to the library to beat off. Yeah, and use their computer to or, jerk off. Or are you going to a li- the library? The library of sex is that a thing? That's probably not. It's got to be. A thing. There's a museum of sex. There's so much fucking gross shit in this city. <laughs> Someone needs a clean. When room. you say gross shit, I feel like the museum of sex is just like a tourist trap. Oh, well, it is. It's so. <laughs> it's probably not a gro- the gross side of the sex industry in New York City. First time I ever came here, I like walked past that place and I was with a bunch of friends. And we're like, oh, let's go. And then we found out that it cost money. And we immediately were like, no. Just like walked away. You thought something in New York City that was that was hooking tourists, <laughs> you specifically, would be just a free, free thing. It was brand new. Del Close Marathon 2008. I was Whoa. here. Whoa, bro. Yeah. What, what time slot? We had a pretty decent time slot. We say dece. De- we have a pretty dece time slot. I think it was it was in the afternoon. It was, wow. But it was at Chelsea, so we were grateful. All right. That's that's insider improv stuff for... Insider improv, guys. Uh, Mick Napier, uh, Del Close. Viola Spolin. Viola Spolin. Andrew Alexander. Uh, uh, some, uh, Kevin City. Howard Johnson. Is that... Kevin, yeah, uh, Kim Howard Johnson, <laughs> co-writer of Truth and Comedy. All right, so 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 you picked Entourage, and we actually sort of went to give a little background. We went a little back and forth on what we we're going to watch because when I asked you mm-hmm. to be on, you we were sort of in the midst of a Terminator Two conversation. Yeah, but so, we also in the same conversation revealed that we have each seen every episode of Entourage. Yeah, yeah, it both it both came out there. I've. I'm 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 say I'm 95 percent sure there might be like one episode I missed you know yeah. just, but I've seen more or less every episode yeah um, you've seen one you've seen them all they're all exactly the they're same. all exactly the same so we were thinking either the Sarah Connor Chronicles or Entourage mm-hmm. and then when you came over and we might talk about hopefully get to Terminator but somehow we definitely we'll find, will we'll find a way to loop it into Entourage yeah. and um, the episode that we chose was basically because you. Only remember, like, only, like, think about it. If you're a fan of Entourage and you're listening, like, try to think of, like, an episode that just jumps out at you. Yeah, there's, like, maybe there's one. I, I, I just added one in my brain to the two that I can think. Like, it, no, no, and I didn't even think of the first one that you mentioned. I only have two that jump out. What was it? The the one the first one is the one that we're watching, mm-hmm. which is Turtle gets a new pair of shoes, like yeah. wants to get these specific Fuki pair of Jamas, shoes. baby. And that, when I said that, that jump, you were like, totally. Yeah. That's and the other one is a part. We'll, we'll talk about it after we watch it, but um, and then the other one that jumped out to me was um, and it took me a second, but when he's uh, him and Andrew Dice Clay are doing a show, Johnny Drama and him are doing a show, and oh, like yeah. he goes to his house and his son is playing drums. Yeah, it was just his real son. Yeah, it's his real son. Oh, man, it just it. It's like uh, the thing I love about this show is the same thing that I like love about Kerber Enthusiasm and Seinfeld is like it starts out in like a very specific place and then by the last like seasons it's just this insane parody of itself yeah like, it's basically like yeah this show first of all great premise like totally would hook me if if I didn't know it yeah. it's like a guy basically uh one guy becomes famous in a crew, like, mm-hmm. and he and he has obviously. It's like an you and your three best friends living it up in L.A. with all the money you want, the coolest and best city in the world. Well, what's interesting is I just looked this up on Wikipedia. I do minimal research on this show, mm-hmm. but you know that Mark Wahlberg is an executive producer, mm-hmm. and it's sort of based on his, you know, like. Because he's from Boston or whatever, he's got his, he's got a bro actor. He's got his bros and mm-hmm. all that. So it's supposed. To, it's uh, wait, isn't Mark Wahlberg's brother? Wasn't he in New Kids on the Block? Yeah. Uh, what was his name? Uh, he's also in The Departed too. The Departed two straight to DVD. Yeah, it's straight to D- <laughs> yeah, which straight to DVD is it's like after the colon. Like, <laughs> Departed two straight to DVD. <laughs> That's such. That would be wow. They should totally do that. Yeah, that would be so good. Departed <laughs> straight to DVD. You know, be oh man, I would love to like work super hard in this in in the comedy industry that we're in, uh-huh. and then like convince a studio to give me like seven million dollars, and I split it up across four different straight to DVD sequels. Uh-huh. And movies. <laughs> And you That'd get four movies like, for the price of one. You're, first of all, you're going to give me seven million dollars flat out, and then I'm going to make four straight to DVD, and they will slightly make their money back. Like they, yeah. they'll more or less. And the, you know what? Here's an interesting thing: Are straight to DVD movies going to exist? 
in like you know what I, I feel mean? Feel like it'll be like straight to Netflix. I feel like it'll be like digital, no theatrical release. Like maybe yeah. But, well, I mean, I feel like theaters will be around forever. Yeah, I think th- I I agree, but I don't know if straight to. I feel like so many movies get lost on Netflix. That, that genre of like straight to DVD, straight to VHS is going to be so gone. Yeah, because with that, the the thing about those is that those <laughs> those totally. Straight to DVDs to me are a lot of them like trick you in the in the in the uh, when you're at the like blockbuster. Yeah, because like when you're a kid, like I, I was thinking about this the other day because like I loved Superman, I loved Batman when I was a kid, and like I didn't know that the first like Superman movies from the '70s existed. And my brother was like, "You want to watch Superman after school one day?" I was like, "Yeah." And then I felt like I got duped into like this is old piece of crap. Like I don't want to watch this. I want to watch like a Wait, new Superman with Christopher Reeves. Yeah. <laughs> to, in my perspective, I had like the context of like, okay, this is going to be similar to like Tim Burton's Batman, right? But it wasn't at all. And right. like, if you go back and watch those movies, they're so like pre any sort of formulaic action movies. They're right, so weird. Right. Yeah. That I was like, what the? This is fucking bullshit. Man, you were I you were like that. Then you were a step above because I liked like. I, I don't know. Actually, you know what? That happened to me too. I think maybe I mentioned this on the podcast, but like, did what I was about to say is that you're discerning. Like, you you were able to say like this is bad. <laughs> you know, like the one when I got tricked into getting like a straight to DVD thing was I bought. I was such a huge Jim Carrey fan. Like, I loved mm-hmm. In Living Color, and then when Ace Ventura came out and Dumb and Dumb, you know, I was like, yeah. whatever. I was just like loved it. Me too. So. And in the in the blockbuster, there was a VHS for sale. Not for rent, <laughs> and it was called Rubber Face, and it was from the 1980s when he was in Canada, and it was what it turned out. And the cover is him making a funny face, mm-hmm. and on the back it's about him or whatever you know, like the synopsis: Jim Carrey in Rubber Face. The real movie is called like Introducing Franny or something, like mm-hmm. introducing like somebody, a girl's name, and it's a after school special about a girl who thinks she's too fat. And he plays the friend. Oh, yeah. That's a whole thing, too. Dude. That's gone. Is like when... Yeah, because like actors will make movies that are just bullshit. Yeah. And then they would blow up in the studio. Be like, well, let's pull out an old piece of garbage that they were in for a second. Overboard starring Adam Sandler. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like let's I'm, give him top billing. He's in... Like, this will, like, we'll trick people. <laughs> yeah. It's totally... So I feel like... What I was, I guess, the straight to DVD conversation led us to the basically renting shitty stuff. I don't think, I yeah. think in the future, not going to exist. No, it's not going to. What's even, what's even more terrifying to think about is, like, you know, if you were a fan of like Mr. Show or like mm. any any of the, like anything that wasn't in syndication, you had to like make sure that you were there and watched it. And like, for our childhood, we experienced part of that. Whereas like. You had cable, but there wasn't, I mean, you had VCRs, but it was like, it wasn't the same now where it's like, imagine the amount, imagine the filmmakers that like Netflix streaming is going to produce mm-hmm. where they can just like watch anything they want. They don't have to like go out like Quentin Tarantino talks about like, right. You saw a movie, you saw it once and it existed once and it's gone forever and you'll right. never see it again. And there wasn't anything as like a cult hit or anything like that or like what happened to like a movie like American Psycho. Right. Like that just would have been a movie and it was gone and everyone forgot. It's going to be insane. Or maybe it's going to be horrible. Yeah. <laughs> what comes out? Uh, what we're saying, guys, is like cherish the moment. Cherish the moment um, like the main characters on Entourage do all the time. Good. Good. Wrapping it around. Mm-hmm. And sometime we're going to wrap it around to Terminator. But, oh. But let's so let's we're going to watch Entourage. This is the episode where all I can remember is that Turtle wants a pair of Nikes. There's a really funny part in it that is not intentional, but I like it a lot. All right. So we're going to check it out. Anything else I should be if you remember that we should be looking out for in this episode? Um, hmm. No. Nope, nothing. I mean, it's an episode of Entourage. There's yeah. pretty much. Yeah, it's minus. Look out for Johnny Drama being worried about something. Johnny Eric Drama. being hey, uptight. Bro. Hey, bro. Hey, brother. Got anger issues, man. That's pretty good. I was doing um, Rowdy, R- 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 Randy <laughs> yeah, Savage like, or whatever. It is. It's like a shitty wrestler. <laughs> He's like a Hollywood Hulk Hogan from NWO. <laughs> All right, we're going to check out Entourage. The episode is not called the Turtle Shoe episode. It's called, <laughs> I think it's called What About Bob? So we're going to watch What About Bob, which is 
why would you name an episode of anything? Yeah. I think Bill Murray's in it. That's why they named it that. Oh, is he? No, he's not. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, that makes sense. That would be great if that he That would, yeah. If I was that, about to say, like, never, but I was like, yeah, he probably would. He totally would, perhaps. But it would be funny to have just a side character. Like, if Sigourney Weaver was in, like, an episode of something featured, like, slightly featured, and they called, like, Aliens. You know, <laughs> and it wasn't about that. That would be unbelievable. Uh, aliens. Sequel directed by... Uh, James Cameron, Terminator. Terminator. We did it. We did it. Let's watch Entourage. We got no shot here, Vin. No shot. Ah, uh, don't worry. Yo, turtle. Chicken, dickhead. But I don't get it. This was so... You. Which is like half... Shoot the sneak. The... Oh, how? Nike. So you don't think I called her yesterday? All right. We just watched... What about Bob? We did it, baby. We checked it out. It's so funny how we both knew it as the Fukujama episode, and that's like the like B or C storyline, and like it's like yeah. the small, very small plot point. It's, everything else is fucking boring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Fukujamas is the best. Fukujamas is the best. You want to talk about? Let's we, let's give a, a let's give a little background on what the episode's about. Okay, so in the beginning of the episode, uh, Vinny and E. Vinny is the star of the group. Vinny if, Chase. Vinny Chase. He's the their cash cow yeah and he's a movie star eric e is his aka the heartbreak kid Ooh, he is the uh his one of his friends and his like man one of his manager he's his manager ari is his agent ari is his agent and that lady is his publicist right the the lady yeah the loud italian lady right exactly um so yeah so Vinny and e are meeting with ari Mm -hmm. well they have a project that's in development currently uh based on uh, the ramones and where Vinny chase is supposed to play joey ramone the most terrifying human being ever conceived i mean ever. joey ramone i guess was like six four six five i don't know he just lo- like uh, the biggest gangly yeah. uh, like he's ugly he's awesome all of his songs are about like i'm ugly and no one wants to sleep with me yeah and 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 Vinny chase who's played by adrian garnier yeah, who's so horrible. Dude, his one of his lines that he said was <laughs> one of the worst <laughs> lines I've ever – he goes um, – the, the other story is that uh, Turtle's trying to get these shoes. Turtle is like the, the like hip-hop-ish dude of the group. He's basically like they're – like in real life, he would just be like a drug dealer. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, who but like shows... hung out sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and – in this, he's trying to get the Fukijamas, and when he first says that to Vinny, Vinny goes, Fukijamas? No, Fuki what is? Yeah, it's like, oh, just... But did he say Jamas? He did say Jamas. I thought he said might, what is. Might, it might have been. I mean, it was like, it might have well has been, have been if it was not. Ugh. Terrible. But, um... And that's, that's part of the reason the show is so, like, stupid, is like... In no universe could he be this, like, insane leading man that, like, he's playing. Like, I mean, he's definitely, like, good-looking, I'd say, but he's not, yeah. like, he doesn't have that charisma of no, a star no, no. or any and, sort of intensity or anything. He just looks like, just like a, a model or something like that. I mean, it would be, this show would be sort of interesting if it was, like, and I forget, I mean, I've seen so many episodes, but I sort of forget the progression. But, like, if he started as this huge star, mm-hmm. and then it turned, you know, because this happens, like, somebody's huge, and then they don't have the talent to carry it through to a whole career. Yeah. If this was just, like, the downward spiral of it, that would be... I like, mean, I feel like the show, his career ebbs and flows. Right. And, like, there's uh, there's seasons where he's, like, dead, and they're like, right, trying to bring true. it back to life. When he... Do you remember the... Like towards the end, when he like had a cocaine habit for like three episodes, yeah. and then mm-hmm. immediately was like, oh, I'm not, I don't have an addictive personality. I just like, <laughs> I don't know, I was feeling weird. Now nah, I'm gonna start smoking weed and drinking again, like like oh. a normal dude. Oh god! So in this one, he's meeting with E and Ari and Bob, which is a producer to to try to sell Bob's movie mm-hmm. with and- with Vinny attached to um, movie studios. Yeah, and who played? Bob uh, Martin Landau. Martin Landau plays this old, boring fuck that isn't cool, like the mill fucker Ari and uh, cool boy E. And the, do you remember how like they found that script? No, I don't remember how they found the the script. Bob had it, and he's like kind of like a washed up Robert Evans type. And he came into Ari's office, and E was there. And Ari wanted to ditch him, so he's like, E, go hang out with this old, cool guy, when in reality, he's an old, boring guy that just has some money. 
Right. And like he wouldn't let him leave E's house. And then or he wouldn't let him leave Bob's house. And then E just found this script in a drawer and he's like, Oh, this would be great for He me. found it in a drawer. Yeah. That's unreal. That's amazing. Yeah. That like why was he looking in a drawer? Because he's fucking bored at this old idiot's house. So this, this guy is an old piece of shit. He needs to be dead. Yeah, that's that's basically how he's a little bit. He's a little bit nicer. He tries to like be the mediator between them, mm-hmm. but Ari is just like shitting on him hardcore. I mean, that's like mm-hmm. if that was a business relationship, that would be like that's abuse. Like the way the way yeah. that he's treating an old man. Like even if. He's old and out of touch, which is like to treat a man like that is so insulting. You know, like I, I don't have an agent, but the people that I do know that have agents have kind of like an intimate relationship mm-hmm. with their agent. Yeah. And like if Ari was like a real agent and acted that way and you saw him like decimate an old piece of shit like that, you'd be like, I don't want I don't to have anything to, to do with this guy. Yeah. It's horrible. It's not worth it. I mean, like, like in no way is it real. Associated with, but you know what? That's the thing is like, there have to be some elements of, and not that, I mean, it's totally over the top, but like he's based off of, what's the guy's name that he's based uh, off of? Rahm Emanuel's brother. Yeah. Uh, John Emanuel. No. John, uh, J- uh, Jake Emanuel. <laughs> <laughs> is that really it? No, it's, it's, uh, it's like an Israeli sounding first name. What it's like. It's got to be close to Ari. We both Get have Rom. smartphones, but they're too far away to, to look at. Mine's charging. And mine's just... I, it's it, it's within... I can see it, but I'm not going to get it. Well, let's up. pretend like it's 1999. <sighs> we'll never know his name. It's 2005, the year of this episode. Or the 2006. Year, this is 2006, and... Uh, we wouldn't have iPhones back then. But you know, what I was going to say is, oh, yeah, he's, he's based off of this guy. So there's got to be some reality. I mean, I'm sure in Hollywood there are huge dicks. But there's yeah. got to be this element of, like, you're, you're like, shitting on me in front of me. Like That was one thing. I know someone that went to a, a taping of a sitcom, and they sat in the, uh, like, agent's box or, like, mm-hmm. industry box. And they just were like, everyone there was disgusting because they were just like all like they didn't have like they weren't they were around themselves. And like at one point, uh, it was a taping of the Chelsea Handler uh, sitcom. Okay, And uh, one of one of the agents was like, Chelsea Handler. Yeah, I used to fucking uh, have her. She couldn't fucking sell anything. He's just like talking about her like a fucking playing card or like the way you would talk about like a 1990 like. Chevy Cavalier, oh. like uh, it wouldn't fucking start. Alternator problems, like, oh, but he's so this gross. old piece of shit with glasses that looks like he just pays someone to pretend he's had an orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just. I mean, I'm sure there's so much awfulness. Luckily, oh man, we'll we'll never know. No, we'll we'll never. East Coast for life, baby, baby. Um, so they meet with, they're trying to sell this Ramones, uh, movie. They're treating this guy, Bob, like shit. Bob is fighting back somewhat, but like, he's just a piece of shit. He's an old piece of shit. It's also sad how they write him just to be like, it is. I mean, it's like how we think of elderly people. He says, he says the line to basically at the first meeting, Martin Landau keeps talking. He's the, he's Bob. He's what about Bob? And, uh, he keeps talking and it overshadows Ari and he ruins the deal for this one product for this one studio. And afterwards, Ari is just shitting on him, shitting on him, shitting on him. And E is trying to be between them, like mediating, be like, no, Bob, next time, you know, maybe Ari should talk because he's he because it's Bob's much. script. Bob's got to be involved. Yeah. And and uh, and then he uh, Bob says, uh, you know what? Yes. But the only reason is because, Eric, you have kind eyes or something like that. Like, uh, you're a sweet man. You have kind eyes. You have, you're a sweet man. You have kind eyes. Like sweet young man, I think. Oh, that's like that's not a real th- like I, mean, I was saying like to read that line out loud it must well, be it the was, hardest thing for him. His character was written the way like the, the way a, a man who hates women would write a female character <laughs> is like the way he was written, but like someone who hates old people. Right. Like there were m- many moments like that. There's so when when um, when Turtle and Vinny are looking for their shoes. For, oh, Vinny is helping. Trying to help Turtle get Fukijamas. Uh, Turtle thinks that um, if he brings Vinny Chase with him to the front of the line, he'll be able to cut. But yeah. Vinny is so kind-hearted that yeah. he says, I can't do it. And somebody goes, like, man of the people, Aquaman, or yeah. something like that. 
And uh, which when are they going to make a real Aquaman movie? That's going to be dude. Great. I, that's another. Let's wait. Let's put that on back burner because I want to talk about that for sure. <laughs> um, but in the car, they, they the shoe sells at this one place, and they're driving over to another place. And Vinny gets on the phone with a guy and says, "Like, hey, I'll I'll give you fifteen hundred dollars if you put aside a pair for my buddy Turtle." Yeah, this is a clerk at a shoe store. I think it's called Defeated is the name of the shoe store, <laughs> which might be real. And I mean, it's very well could be real. Defeated, yeah, defeated. Great, great, um, great little pun. And uh, and when he calls him the guy, it's this is just a no, nothing character. This is just a character that's like he, he's calling to set aside a pair of shoes. And the guy goes, "Yeah, I'll do it if you. I don't care about money. I can't do that. But if you go to my sister's birthday party and take pictures with her and her annoying friends, <laughs> it's like why, why." Why make him an asshole to little girls? Like, yeah. Why not just be like, it would be, you know what? It would be great if you could take it. My, my sister loves you if, and her and her friends would forever, like, it would be the best experience yeah. of their lives. Why saying annoying, fr- like. Uh, this fucking dumb bitch that I don't <laughs> like. Uh, can you do something? For, can, like, I'm going out. I'm bending over backwards uh, to ask you to do this. Oh, God, this yeah. This fucking little piece of shit I can't stand. Uh, do it. Just do it. They're fucking Idiot's dumb sister. She's in a stupid wheelchair. She can't get up. It's so. Uh, it tell so. You should tell about your favorite part in the because that's okay. in the line for the Fuka Um So they're waiting in line at the first shoe store, which they show up. He wants to cut. And there's no. Let's get the back of the line. They're in the back of the line. So there's all these people streaming out with uh, these shoes, and uh, Turtle's standing there, and he's kind of like upset. He's like, "Oh, we're never gonna get him." And then this guy walks by, and he goes, "Check it out, Turtle. Got the last size nine or whatever." And he like opens up his shoe box and shows these fucking bullshit ass shoes. And I was watching to give credit my friend Sam Weiner, who uh, writes for the Onion in Chicago. He uh, was watching with him, and I didn't think anything of it, but Sam was just like, who fucking knows Turtle? Like, who, well, why is he, like... Why I, is he, well, we were saying, it's like, not only, why? Do, how does he know him? Because Turtle, you only see these guys with each other. Yeah. They, they never meet anybody else. And, like, what does he, like, does he, it's not like he, like, goes and hangs out at, like, an fucking improv theaters I don't know, or that's maybe it's I like do. shoe message boards like how uh, like yeah they're all sneaker heads too all that's, sneaker yeah. heads. so it's like he's friendly enough to say hi to turtle but he's also a dick enough to say look i got the last pair of nines and then turtle's like i'm 10 dude yeah but like who what yeah like, who, turtle has friends outside of the crew of morons in that show yeah. and then like their adversarial his, his relationships. Well, well, then, so that leads to when they go to the other shoe store where where he, Finney's made a deal with a guy with a dumbass sister. Yeah, um, oh, God, she's run- so stupid, man. She's like, ah, uh, uh, she's fucking this annoying bitch, and I live at home. <laughs> and uh, they go there, and Turtle sees. He, he's like, uh, the also, guy's like, yeah, I'm, I'm so, I don't have a sister, but I know dudes that did have sisters, and their friends were always like. Something they liked, right? Because it's like single women in your house. Like as a like, I'm assuming this guy is in his twenties or whatever. Like, right. his sister's probably unless she's like 14 or something like that. Which still, I mean, I don't care. I don't feel anything, dude. I'll do whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow, this is getting. There are no consequences ultimately, oh, dude. You know I what don't I mean? know if you know, but there's like laws and like. Do what you feel? What's, no, do what you feel, no, man. No. Do what you feel. Whatever you want. Done been doing what I feel. Man. Done been doing what you feel. Okay. No, I, I, I actually really, I want to say like, no, you can't. No, I can do whatever I want. Okay. I don't care. Well, you can't. But... I'm never gonna die. I'm never gonna get caught. Okay. <laughs> Not gonna happen to me. <laughs> Okay, so so Turtle goes into the, they go into the shop together, and Turtle sees, and we we you recognize him as DJ AM. I only recognize him because he was also in Iron Man Two, is the DJ of Tony Stark's birthday party. Oh yeah, so DJ AM, and we don't, I don't know too much, but he's he he was a popular DJ. Now he's dead. Yeah, since I don't, how did he? I don't even know. I think it was a airplane crash or something like that i think it was an airplane drug overdose i actually i I don't know i really don't know he was listening to the song it's my airplane and overdosing on drugs by the red hot chili peppers yeah great great red hot chili peppers song yeah one hot minute is that the i think so that was like their last like they fell off but that i think that was the sign of them falling i feel like that song was like came back with california hey dream of california 
There, oh, there's some good lines in that song that I think would fit in on this. I don't even. I remember I bought that. That was like one of the first. Oh yeah, I had that album. Yeah, I yeah. like went out to Rolling Stone Records, Montrose and Harlem Avenue for those shy babies out there, right by Harlem and Irving Plaza, west northwest side of Chicago. Nobody, just nobody. nobody. There's like nope. 1,500 people. Nobody's listening, dude. To there's this. how many people listen to this? Like, like I'd say like 40 to 500 thousand. Yeah. So like and like six. Is that a real? No. Four, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's huge. It's like a run. I've been listening to the show. It's like a running joke. <laughs> people ask you when you say like an insane number. I'm like, no, 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 that's not true. This, this is. I have only listened to this. <laughs> I'm the only person. And my mom. Um. So, oh yeah. So they see DJ AM, and this is goes right in with the thing with the guy saying the size nine shoe, and he goes, um, AM. He's like, AM. Please tell me you. You're a size 11 now, or something like you. You're wearing a, a camo shirt too. So, so camouflage. So, Turtle knows. Not only does he know DJ Am, mm-hmm. he specifically knows this guy's shoe size enough yeah. that he'd say, "I hope your shoe size, shoe size has changed, so you don't have the same. You don't take my shoes." My closest friends, I have no idea what. Their I shoe could not size tell is. you. I don't know what my my girlfriend of four years shoe size. Su- I, I don't know what it is. Yeah, you don't know what her shoe size is. Shoe size, shoe size. I don't. I don't know. Same here. I'm marrying. I'm marrying a woman, and I forget her shoe size. I have no idea. I think maybe. Dan Klein is the only guy I know because he was like, I have a pair of shoes. Do you want them? And I was like, yeah, I think they're size nine. Dan, text me if you're listening. Dan, text. You know what? Anybody who's listening right now who gets this point, uh, tweet at Dan Klein. I think mm-hmm. it's Dan Klein is fat. Dan Klein is fat at Twitter.com. And tweet uh, Connor O'Malley. Is that your Twitter? Uh, I think it's Connor underscore O'Malley. If you Google Connor O'Malley Twitter, I'm sure it'll pop up. E-R. E-R. Include them both in the in the tweet and hashtag Dan call Connor about the shoes. Yeah. Hashtag. Yeah. Hashtag. Yeah. Hashtag. Yeah. Another hashtag Pope. Hashtag Pope. New Pope. That's going to be a real funny bit when I do that four years from now, just start uh-huh. hashtagging stuff. Pope. <laughs> hashtag Pope. Yeah. Hashtag Pope. You're the, well, you are the hashtag Pope. I'm the, ha- I'm the Pope of hashtags <laughs> and the, I'm the papal of hashtags. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like the DJ Am, th- and I think that's like a running thing throughout this series is like them running into like famous people or whatever. Yeah, the show is. Of- oh, I mean, that's one of the tropes of the show is that it's filled with cameos, and I think that's also like, I don't know how much I would pay for someone to do a cameo, but I'm sure it's like a real juicy because the people they get are never like like A list or yeah, it's, B. Sort of- it's like very much. I mean, Andrew Dice Clay like was in a whole arc of an episode. Of I think season. he might have paid to be on the show. <laughs> um, I pay fifteen hundred dollars and I stick around afterwards and fold up chairs. Dude, was I was I telling you that that I watched some of his Netflix like on Netflix like a while ago? I doubt it's still yeah. Long, but I think we were special, talking about this. Yeah, his special and I listened to WTF the podcast mm-hmm. and the, the, in an interview with him, he sort of swayed me about how like I don't I he, I was a little too young for him, but I remember yeah. like Hickory Dickory Dock like all that stuff mm-hmm. and. uh and in the this interview with him, he's talking about how, like, come on, man, it's freedom of speech. It's a character. Like, all these things. People were so offended at what I was saying. And I went on an Arsenio Hall, and he sort of, like, dressed me down for how I talked to people and sort of called me out. And in one way, I was like, man, you know what? Like, it's true. Like, you know, like, it's a character, freedom of speech. Mm-hmm. And I watched that Arsenio interview, and I was like, I mean, all right, yeah. And then I was like, I don't know how to think about this. Then I watched his stand-up. I was like, yeah, totally. Like, you're a total asshole. Like, no. the things that he was yeah. saying were not – it wasn't even, like, in joke form. No. Like, he was just, like, talking about, like, hanging people for their sexual orientation. Hanging gay people, yeah. Yeah, hanging gay people. I mean, that's like – It's just like – yeah, I really – I mean, it's really terrifying, like, the way, like, that's – I mean, like – uh, I don't know. I mean, there's the whole like Louis C.K. defense of the word. I'm going to say faggot. Mm-hmm. Like his whole stand up thing where he's like, ah, you know, it was just what people said. But it's like, you just can't say it. It's just, it's like, don't say it. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, well, I think, I think also now is very different than the 80s. Like, I'm not to say that the 80s were like great. I'm saying, no, like, they, they like were great for thing. gay people. <laughs> like, there was no disease named after them. Yeah, like, I mean, it's like. 
But now, now it, it's something. To, I mean, I have an Eddie Murphy album on a record where the first yeah, track is. We, oh yeah, the first track is called "Faggot." It's like what? Like that's crazy, dude. And they're even, funny, man. They don't like pussy like you and me. They're hilarious. How could you? How could you look at a pussy and be like, "No, thank <laughs> you." And you want to put a fucking dick in your mouth? What are you, a girl? Come no. On. Come on, bro. There is actually. This is uh, sad to say because I'm a huge fan of. Uh, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Yeah. Oh but yeah. There's a they they Flag. yeah they before it's the evil. Well, they are evil. To be fair, so maybe first of all, it's one of the best movies ever. Bogus Journey. Yeah, I gotta I gotta rewatch it. Um, I love that movie. I love it. And is it I, the one where they come back as robots? Or? Yeah, they they they're few bad bad future uses, and then they're uh, the robot versions. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. And the bad future uses that kill, is a good them. example of like taking a sequel and like that's why I love it. It's yeah. the ultimate sequel, and we can get right to Terminator Two, Terminator which, Two, uh, in a second. But it's the ultimate sequel because it takes a premise that's these time traveling dudes, mm-hmm. and how easily could they have just rehashed the first movie where they go back in time and just get different yeah. historical figures? I think it's like the perfect setup for like a straight to dvd like a straight to, or yeah. like a boring like middle of the road and they fucking went to like the they go to heaven they, they go, go to heaven hell. they go to hell they go to and their he- version of hell is their own personal hells it's like a creative hell like one yeah, of them has very... to like kiss his old grandma and she has like hair on his face and it's played by him alex winter and it's like really creepy Ugh. and and so keanu good. is in a uh, different hell where it was like easter or something like that it, Oh, that's – yeah, there's the Easter bunny. Yeah, it's yeah. following him around and then he goes to another part of hell where it's him doing push-ups because his dad wants him to go to military school in Alaska. Oh, man. It's it's awesome. It's really cool. Is that a real thing, military school in Alaska? That has got to be. Actually, military. it's uh, in Juneau, Alaska. No, I have no – I don't. <laughs> you went, right? You were, yeah, I did, I did a semester. Lieutenant first class, military. right? Yeah. <laughs> Lieutenant first class from? <laughs> yeah, Lieutenant first class from Alaska military school. Um, I don't know how we got to this, but – we got to Terminator 2, so that's all we... That's Do you all we teach need. at UCB? I used to. I don't teach as much anymore. It'd be funny if you, like, introduced yourself as Lieutenant First Class Rowan, like, <laughs> in the first day of class, like, and never bring it up or say anything. Like, yeah, no, I, was, I mean, I was in the military, but let's get two up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm uh, PTSD, but that's... Uh, yeah, I mean, I saw action. I mean, it was, you know, it was front lines. And, yeah, I mean, it was like... I was there when we, uh, when we t- you know, when we took uh, Saddam Hussein out of power, but, you know... I don't want to talk about it. I want to talk about it. All right, two more up. Let's uh, your word talk about is... Game, guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so... Let's talk about oh, resting the game. Let's talk about for a minute... Um, we have a lot of notes here. There are a lot of notes, but I do want to talk about uh, that you... And uh, on Facebook, I've noticed, and on Twitter, I don't know if you post about it on Twitter, yeah. but you... You do like... Uh, I think I f- found out that you like Entourage through like Facebook, through a post. Or, or that yeah. you, th- there was something there. So you basically, like, what, how would you say what you do on Facebook? I guess I, um, it's going to sound real pretentious or stupid. I have an alter ego or a character that I write stuff in. I have a fake Facebook account. And I also post a lot of stuff on Craigslist and Yahoo Answers. And uh, I got kicked off of Yelp because they realized it was like a fake account. So oh, they really? kicked me off. And I, Wow, that's amazing that they that they... I guess, well, I, I just guess. had a lot of abusive language about like reviews for like Ruby Tuesdays in Times Square, and uh-huh. like <laughs> completely made up stories of like my girlfriend holding me hostage and Ruby. It's a guy. Basically, the idea is it's a guy from Staten Island who uh, works at AutoZone, goes to ITT Tech in Albany. <laughs> he drives up. His grades are always doing bad, and he lives with his dad in his basement, who, which is like his own apartment because his dad can't do stairs. <laughs> his dad has purple feet so he can't walk up and down stairs and he's always in and out of fights with his girlfriend his ex-girlfriend and his ex-girlfriend is dating a 50 year old man that has like three like eight year old kids that go out and beat the shit out of this guy all the time <laughs> it's this really dumb character and is a undoubtedly a huge fan of entourage right. the first time i actually ever posted as it was uh, I did a Craigslist uh, men man seeking men ad for a uh, real life entourage, <laughs> and it's this guy Tony looking for a, a crew of four dope ass dudes uh, who um, 
like want to hang out and be the real life entourage. So, that's so funny. And the language that you use is just like, like the the like the style of it. It's like all caps. It's, yeah. it's like all caps. It's just like really in your face and obnoxious and just like yeah. uh, it's it's great. But you said that you while we were watching that you wrote a an entourage. as that character I wrote an entourage spec script. <laughs> And I do it as a solo bit. So you made this character. So what is it? And you can you like talk about in this episode. But what really draw? I mean, like I watched. It's like popcorn to me. This this TV show. Yeah, like. I guess. Yeah, I was trying to think because I have been real excited about doing this, and I've been like watching a bunch of Entourage episodes, okay. like in preparation. And I'm like, what is so? Why do? Why have I seen every episode of the show? And then yeah. today I was like. There's just like I'd say like eighty percent of TV. It's just like I don't really like it or hate it. Uh-huh. I just watch it. Like I've seen probably every episode of Home Improvement, mm-hmm. every episode of like Friends. Like and those shows, those are shows I don't like, and they haven't influenced me in any sort of way. But I know them. Like we were watching, and instantly I was like, oh yeah, Saigon. That's the rapper that uh, Turtle repped for a little bit, and then like it's so deep in my brain. I don't know why. Like I think it's just. Most TV, and I didn't realize until like I like started working a day job that I hate. Like you, people come, people work shitty jobs that they hate, and they just don't want to think for an hour. Yeah, and so they watch something stupid. And this doesn't this sh- mean they're dumb. They just don't want to think. Oh no, yeah, and I, I think also for this show, pers- for me, like I love movies, I love TV, obviously. Mm-hmm. Like so to see behind that a little bit and being like. Man, it's like, what is this Hollywood? Yeah. Like, there's this like element of like, man, it would be cool to have me and my friends in this. But <laughs> but then when you when you're watching this episode now, it's like also we we're talking about during the episode the way they portray filming TV is so weird. Yeah. The, well, so so the other storyline is that Johnny Drama is shooting a pilot directed by Ed Burns called Five Towns. And it's I on did, NBC. Where are the Five Towns in Long Island? What is that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> No. Oh, you're East Coast, right? Yeah, but I should I should know that, but I don't. Is it's not a Boston tweet thing? at Dan Klein where the five towns are hashtag where the five towns are slash Pope and he'll text me. <laughs> yeah, so hashtag where the five t- where are the five towns? Yeah, and um and so they're filming this, and first of all, Johnny Drama is the he, he's like panic attack city. Johnny Drama hasn't had a panic attack for since '95, so that's 11 years at this point. And at the beginning of the episode, um, Turtle says, "You know what you should do to relax?" Because Johnny Drama is about to shoot a big pilot with Ed Burns, who I did high five at a baseball game once. Mets game. A Mets game. And uh, City Field is that where they play? That was at Shea Stadium. Shea, uh, is that gone? Yeah, Shea's gone, man. When did that happen? Uh, f- three or four years ago. Why did they do that? Because there's. There's nothing right in this world because of corporations, because of Citibank. Um, yeah, Comiskey, man. Anyway, so I don't. Never mind. Let's just go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm they're so filming sad. the five points, and he's getting it's a panic attack. And earlier in the episode, Turtle says the good thing to cool yourself down is to jerk off. Total, like <laughs> I don't like. I would need. I didn't realize until that episode. I was like, yeah, I, I guess like if I masturbated my dick until Kim came out. I'd probably feel relaxed. Because like, usually I'm like, ah, I'm so, like, I have, I, I never use masturbation for that reason at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, just be, like, when you're, like, stressed about something, you yeah. just, yeah, you, usually you use it as a tool to, to alleviate a problem in your brain, like, yeah. that you're dealing with other stuff, and yeah. that's, it's usually when it happens. Um, but he's, so he's having a panic attack in his trailer, and he sees a Maxim magazine. Oh, dude, I can't look at those without getting a huge boner. I can't. Man. And then as soon as I get one, I'm like... <laughs> I gotta jerk off, man. I'm like, what am I gonna do? Walk around with this hard dick all day? No, it's a maxim, bro. Dude, it's a maxim. The fucking, uh, all the American Pie girls are on the cover. Dude, man, that's like maxim versus FHM. Who wins? Oh, uh, dude, hands out maxim. Maxim. It Ugh. was first and foremost. Because you get the whole year and you put it on a shelf and it is a the spines spell out a pretty lady. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. Do they really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you stack them up, it's like. A, a uh, fucking a girl that is a piece. Well, of you're, you're now if you can't see this, but Connor's now scrolling through his phone of every year of Maxim that's on his bookshelf. Yeah, shelf. I'm huge Maxim head. Tweet at me, uh, Maxim rocks, just so I know. <laughs> Hashtag Maxim rocks. 
ha- hashtag Pope. And uh, <laughs> I love dropping hashtags now. Yeah. Um, it's the dumbest thing ever. So king of hashtags, king Pope, hashtag Papal Pope. <laughs> Papal Pope. Papal Pope. Um, <laughs> but so Johnny Drama, okay, Johnny Drama is in the trailer having a panic attack. So he jerks off to a Maxim magazine. And his panic attack is just him being like, you're a pussy. You're a pussy. He keeps saying that out loud. I've never had a panic attack, but I think it's not that, right? No, it's probably just like crippling, like all the things around you are sort of circling. And it's sort of like, I mean, I don't think I've ever had a panic attack, but I've definitely been so stressed that I feel like I'm working myself up into like a panic. And I feel like it's like circular thoughts. Like, oh, no, no, everything, blah, blah, blah. But it would not be like, you fucking pussy. You're a fucking pussy. Yeah, it would be like, I can't breathe. I think I'm going to die. But in this, no, you just go jerk off. And one of the, he has his mic on, and the sound guy outside is listening, and he puts the headphones on Ed Burns to hear him jerking off. You told off. me. You get was a no-no on the set. That would be a huge no-no on a set. And I know that because I know that you'd get probably get fired for that because when I was an intern on a TV production, uh, I was a Care sound. Say which? Uh, on Stella. Comedy Central. What? Really? Yeah, I was a sound intern, and you'll see me uh, as a extra in the Paper Root episode. I feel like the thing is, like, on a set, it's all about professional. You know, like, everybody's doing their job. You want to get it done right. So yeah. if, if you were listening to somebody else, to an actor's microphone while you were not while you were not filming that's like an invasion of privacy and the mm-hmm. guy that i worked at was the sound sound guy said so like rifling through someone's drawers if you were like a maid yeah exactly so the sound editor on the set said that he heard this story uh he, he was showing me that you always bring down the levels after a scene you mm-hmm. always bring down every, all the audio levels so you can't hear in the headphones because they're also headphones hanging around for like directors or producers to mm-hmm. listen to and he said that a famous story is that like robert de niro was on another side of the set like away from the sound and and they weren't shooting and um and uh he saw the audio guy like looking at him or something was, and from across the room, Robert De Niro was like, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Like talking to the mic. Can you hear me? And the sound guy was like, yeah, like thumbs mm-hmm. up. I can hear you. And then, and Robert De Niro was like, you're fired. I wonder if he like flipped out. It's like, you're fucking like, or if he's just like, you're fired and like walked away. Yeah. I mean, I also wonder if the story is true, but yeah, but the, the, but have you seen that Robert De Niro thing? What's the Robert De Niro thing? There's like a, there's a, He's doing a promo for the Tribeca Film Festival. Oh yeah, like, I've seen that. Yeah. I've seen the I've seen the film festival thing, but is this like it's the promo where he's like where the director's like, "Hey, can you do that again with more energy?" and Robert is like, "No, yeah, I did it one time and I did it the exact way I want to and I'm not selling cars here." and he just walks away. The, the, oh, I've not seen that. That's a real thing. That's like a but like some that they shot that Yeah. But it wasn't part of the commercial. It was like an outtake on the set. It was an outtake. Yeah. I mean, he's just like standing in front of a theater or something. I mean, like that. dude, I can I mean, Listen, he's an actor, man. He's a pure. It's also like one tiny part of someone's day taken completely out of context. Yeah. Which is like, I think people forget about that, where it's like, like that Christopher, what's his name tape from Terminator? Christian Bale. Christian Bale from Terminator. Terminator, from Terminator Salvation. Terminator. Salvation. Of, Salvation. Dude, I totally under, I mean, not as, uh, like that he's well, I think he freaked out to somebody on Terminal Salvation because the guy like walked through the frame while they were shooting and it's like yeah he probably dude this production is probably millions of dollars like all the cameras are behind budget he's yeah probably, and like, he's he's schedule. like I feel like Christian Bale gets into character pretty hard and if Especially, I mean, I mean, he's portraying John Connor, okay, the savior of you, the human race. The fucking, I mean, you have to understand that this is after Skynet has fucking taken, oh, like... Skynet, I mean, he tried to, do avoid, tried to avoid this three separate times. Yeah. It didn't work out. It happened. And, I mean, people travel back in time to help him not make it happen, and yeah. it, it happened in T3. At the end of T3, it happened. Imagine how bad it is. Anyway, he flipped out. But on the other side, it's like, you can still be nice about it. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I've definitely, like, I don't, I don't think I've I ever flipped out sides. on someone like I've that. I've never flipped out. But I, I understand the that he's not 100% the wrong, but to treat anybody like that is mean. Guys, be nice. Hashtag be nice. Hashtag, I did do recently a hashtag be nice. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a real hashtag. I think it was about, uh, it was Ice-T on Law & Order. I said, st- when you stop being mean, start being funny like Munch. Hashtag be nice. <laughs> nice. You know, just 
telling each other tweets that we did. I, I like tweet. So okay, so back to the thing. He jerks off. Ed, Ed Burns listens to it, mm-hmm. and uh, and then on the set they're shooting a pilot. Johnny Drama is nervous because he has basically a long monologue where he's walking, which would be also like, this huge. is Johnny Drama's career coming back to life. This, this isn't is huge. this isn't uh, like a fucking guest spot. Like he's like one of the main characters on Five Towns, and so he walking. This is on the set of Five Towns. He walks. He does his monologue. He does a really good quote unquote job. Yeah, and it looked good enough that Ed Burns turns while listening on on iPod <laughs> headphones. He goes, he's good, and he's which is the equivalent to newsman looking at a cameraman saying tell me you got that like, <laughs> yeah, it's the exactly. exact same thing and and then uh afterwards this is a walk and talk scene where he's walking and talking and at the end where johnny drama is after he's walked he goes okay now let's get budweiser th- select uh get was in the shot there's too. a budweiser select in the shot it was definitely a case. some sweet ass product placement oh yeah and we're gonna get some budweiser selects after this hey man you know it's kind of like when i like podcasting and doing shows i like uh, having a budweiser select i like a beer that's that's light, but it's still got that nice taste. It's not. It's, it's not the watered Fuki down. Jamas of beers. Hell yeah, mm-hmm. Bud Select, the Fuki Jamas of beers. You're king of beers, and uh, and so Johnny Drama is. They say let's get some reaction shots. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> reaction shots for a scene where he's talking the entire time. He's just walked about you know like ten twenty feet, and the reaction shots are done at the end of the walk, straight to camera, looking at camera. He's mm-hmm. like act angry. And he's in the, sad. the monologue he's giving a monologue to a guy that clearly is like not a part of the show. He's oh, yeah. just a dude. Oh yeah, he's just a dude. He doesn't have a reaction to anything he's saying. And now he's now John Jarvis just react and I thought it was a joke. I thought they were like he was like uh-huh. now act embarrassed because we all heard you jerking off. And it's oh, wait a minute. real quick about that jerking off thing. When he's jerking off and the sound guy knows he's jerking off because he's going like you know like how we all do when we jerk off, like going, Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, I wrote down in my notes they should have just had a line of I am jerking off that he could say. Oh totally. Yeah, he because he was. Because when I'm jerking off, I'm like, Ooh, yeah. I like the way I'm jerking off to uh-huh. this porn. Uh huh. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's gross. It's gross. And the, and it's like, how do you not? This is a show about Hollywood, made by people in Hollywood about the Hollywood experience, and they mm-hmm. they just don't even like try to make like. I also, I mean, I feel like it's interesting to us, but like the people that watch Entourage, I'm sure they don't give a shit about like what actually happens on sets. Or yeah, like, but I feel like if you're writing, I mean, here's, the, I, I mean, listen. It's a TV show. People write it. It's fine. It's not a bad. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad. Like, but there is something but, where it's like, it's, how come? It, why consistently every show, every movie, they it's never the same. Yeah, and it's like, why? Why not just like make it a little feel a little real? Like, why not just have it be? Yeah, yeah. There, it's just like, come on. If you're writing about librarians, and who cares if you're a librarian? Uh, unless it's a porno, time. dude. Oh man, I'm crazy about porn. But do a little bit of research on a librarian. Yeah, the come tiniest on. bit. Just do a little bit. Um, we have to talk about because you said Aquaman should be a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, is that happening? It better. No, what I was saying is between <laughs> what they should have done is pre Smash. Do you know Smash, the TV show? Yeah, the uh, like Broadway show. Yeah, their plan was that they were going to do uh, a TV show about a Broadway musical and then actually make the Broadway musical. Oh, really? It would be awesome between every every entourage <laughs> that they made the movie that's mentioned. Because, like, every year – isn't, like, every season – Queens sort of like Boulevard. Queens Boulevard, uh, the Medellin. Medellin, which – I mean, they all – none of them sound good. They sound so – they all sound horrible. Yeah, yeah. They're all – I mean, he's also a terrible – I mean, actor, so – Johnny Bananas. If Johnny Bananas is a real show. Johnny Bananas is the show that Johnny Drama is the voice on with uh, Andrew Dice Clay. The one thing – uh, I'm a huge Simpsons fan. Uh, that's all I must say. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the Poochie episode, uh-huh, yeah. when uh, the guy who owns Itchy and Scratchy is like, I named some like Poochie the dog, but not that. And then he walks out and everyone's like, Poochie the dog, get over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's a hilarious joke, but I think it's so true. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I'm sure someone's like, I don't know, Johnny Bananas, but let's try to come up with something better. Like, and they're like, he said Johnny Bananas, let's just... I don't want to work on that. It's it just, it stuck in my it sticks in my head. You get the joke. It's Johnny because the guy who wrote the dialogue is like a intern or whatever. Like isn't that the lowest job? And then the and then room? he uh, Johnny Drama, I believe, when he's on that show, gets replaced by Jamie Kennedy. No, Jamie Kennedy is like giving him notes, and he's like, "I want him out of here, and I want uh, what's his name in, right? Who does he want in? He wants uh, Dyson. No, 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 wrong." 
<laughs> uh, wrong. I'm sorry, bro. Wrong. It's that I think it's Johnny Drama and him and Andrew Dice Clay are on the show together and want more money. Oh, and yeah. And then – and Johnny Drama's like worried about that, I think, because he's like just happy to be doing the job. But then Dice like talks him into it, and then Johnny Drama is still holding out for money. Dice Clay uh, caves in to the pressure of the network, and they replace. I think they replace Johnny Drama with Jamie Kennedy. I could be wrong, <sighs> but I'm definitely right. Poor Drama. Nothing ever goes right for that guy. Did you see the uh, Jamie Kennedy New Year's thing? No. Oh my. What oh it? my God! You would love that. The whole thing. I think it was taken off line now but uh is it? this year 2012 2013 um new years mm-hmm. he hosted um jamie kennedy hosted a live like i want to say i might be wrong but like carl's jr sponsored uh oh new God. year's eve countdown and it was like totally like te- technical difficulties the entire time i mean it's hosted by jamie kennedy I mean, and it's carl's jr like, i have like such like a high regard for them really there's a bunch of technical I know. difficulties i know it's so it, it's sort of sad because when you think of like the history of tv and like carl's jr like making hand like hand. solid programming yeah. and and then it sort of devalues the brand a little bit yeah i, I guess, guess i don't want to go there as much anymore it's to me it's sort of a bummer yeah so what like it's hosting? just like it's just really uncomfortable like their curses on air uh Macy Gray is one of the performances she oh, sings man. uh I try that song I try to sing but it's like it's obvious that she's like partied way hard beforehand and oh, and God. Bone Thugs and Harmony are performing was and this online only or was it on the, TV it was on TV in LA only it was like a local thing and somebody put it online like the highlights and then I think the whole thing was up for like a second and it was taken down. It's got to be up somewhere. It's so it's so great. It's amazing. Oh, I but I think that. what what there's something and I, I, this is something I mentioned while we we're watching. But I feel like that and this are like linked. It's like that the the gross side of like Hollywood, like the uh, just something about like the the like broishness is just yeah. There's also another aspect of like they keep on like referencing godfather and like movies like that which are scarface like, types yeah like that type. yeah like i'm no cinema buff like i like movies a lot but i wouldn't say that i'm like the type of guy that's like uh, super knowledgeable about like film or anything right. like that but like these are the type of guys that see like god like scorsese movies and uh a bunch of other movies and they're super derivative of past filmmakers mm-hmm. but they think that they've just absorbed all of film knowledge right 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 forever yes so they're like oh we're cultured because like yeah tracking shots yeah no no, no. I, like i know what i'm talking about like the show is like peppered with like dumb guy stuff like yeah. that. yeah <laughs> where it's like i i don't know i fucking terminator 2 is my favorite movie so like <laughs> i'm no like i've never seen a french new wave movie and i don't fucking want to because it doesn't have fucking liquid robots in it <laughs> So that's the one problem is so few movies have liquid robots. So few. Terminator 2, I think, might be the there's only. There's only, yeah, there's only and two. The Terminator 3 with the Terminatrix. Yeah, and she's got a um, exoskeleton. She's got a skeleton, so it's not even true. Yeah, it's not true. I mean, come on. She can um, make her tits bigger, dude. Again, we're talking about tatas. Ooh. Ooh, there, is there a joke in Terminator 3 where uh, something with her boobs? Yeah, she gets pulled over by a oh, cop. Oh, yeah, and she yeah. grows them bigger yeah. for the cop. Come and the on. cop's like, Paw. and she kills the cop. <laughs> Like she needed. This is a great. Turn it through was so terrible. I remember watching that in the theater and just being like, oh, "I need to see this." Movie. The only thing I'll say is that they, I felt like they did a pretty good job plot wise. I think the. Oh yeah, yeah. I think the ending was awesome. I love. Yeah, that was that. a great ending. I love. Th- that's like, the thing is, the ending was awesome. Where the where the robot like Skynet or whatever does take over. Yeah. It's everything that has been mentioned in the first two movies actually comes. True. Yeah. Which, Which is great, cool. yeah. But like with the fact that Terminator, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, lands in like a, a male strip joint, and he where he when he yeah. puts on the sunglasses in reference to the first two movies, the sunglasses are like pink stars. Yeah, it's like come, come on again. He's like a fucking weird gay dude. What are you doing? Come on, man. You're be a, a straight guy. You're a straight guy. Oh, we didn't talk about Fukijama. That yeah. that in the end of the episode. Um, 
Oh, real quick, uh, the napalm reference to uh, to yeah to apocalypse, apocalypse now. now. He says, "I love the napalm in the morning. It smells of napalm. It smells like apocalypse victory. It's now, like- man. Is sucks compared to Full Metal Jacket." Oh, um, I don't fully disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that much of an opinion. I only watched Apocalypse Now for the first time recently, and I've se- I've seen Full Metal Jacket. Just everyone jerks off over Apocalypse Now. It's, it's pretty. Like- it's pretty amazing production. It's like pretty. Yeah, I'll say that. It's an incredible production, but Sheen is. Great. Full Metal mind. Jacket's great too. I'm gonna blow your mind on this. Do you know that Full Metal Jacket was filmed in South London? I didn't. Doesn't that make it a thousand times better than like it actually looks like Vietnam? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That is pretty crazy. He like flew in palm trees. Dude, man. That's Kubrick. Amazing. Kubrick is amazing. I just watched the the Room two thirty seven documentary about the shining. Oh yeah, is like daughter filmed? No, it's it's uh, basically about sort of like obs- uh, people who are sort of obsessed with the movie. It's all through narration and re-showing parts of the film and how they read the film. It's really interesting. Oh yeah, there's that one part where they're like, see the flag represents the U.S. government. Yeah, and yeah. He's it, like making the ultimate bargain, like and filming then, the moon landing. Yeah, faking the moon landing about na- it, it being about Native Americans, about it being about the Holocaust, and it's really it's really worth watching. Uh, hashtag Hotel Two Thirty Seven. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Uh, na- wait. What were, uh, yeah. 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 Na- oh, Fukuyama. Fukuyama. Oh, yeah. So, so they the, the finally Vinny Chase um, pays uh, Fukuyama twenty thousand dollars to to give him custom cu- to give Turtle custom shoes twenty thousand dollars, and I think custom luxury. That's what I'm into. That's custom luxury shoes, baby. And uh, and the guy who plays Fukuyama, I believe, is the guy who plays Rufio and Hook, <laughs> which was a formative movie. For me, and he's born and raised in Glendale, baby. Ooh, of course he's Asian. Turtle thinks he's like from Asia, like born and raised, but now he's from the suburbs of Los Angeles, California. He, th- he thought he was from the city of Asia. He thought he's he thought he's from Asia Town, um, which is a neighborhood in Asia City, located in uh, I don't know Chinese Town or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's I think that's pretty much that's the yeah. five points. Five, yeah, the five towns. The five towns. That's the five. Five town. points. It's somewhere in the village, right? I don't know. Five points. I think is in Atlanta. <sighs> God. All right. Hashtag. Where? Are, where's five points? Just keep. We didn't get those hashtags yet. We got to talk about Terminator real quick. Oh yeah, we got to talk about Terminator. My bad. Let's talk about Terminator. Okay. Here's what I want to say. I'm going to do this as fast as I can. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, Terminator. This is this is my main opinion about. Let's talk Terminator what about two. the Terminator franchise. Terminator Four, Salvation. Salvation. Did you like it? No, I hated it. And the reason I hated it is because that movie already exists, and it's the first three minutes of Terminator Two when they are flash forward to the yep. future. Absolutely true. They should have just made a two-hour version of that. I I I agree. I, I there are many reasons I didn't like Terminator Salvation. It just felt. It, first of all, it was directed by Mick G. Uh, cool directed dude ever. Totally awesome. But it w- yeah, it was really bad. There's they're, they're like cliched characters like the silent kid, you know, like mm-hmm. it's just like wow, this is the fu- this is Terminator. This is the best sequel ever made. It's unreal. I'd say it's uh, my three sequels that I'd say I mean, everybody says Godfather 2, so that just has to go as the best sequel. Never seen any of the Godfathers. They're great. Godfather 2 you have to say because otherwise you're an asshole. Mm-hmm. It's that, Terminator 2, mm-hmm. and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. There was one I just thought of. Oh, what the fuck was it? Oh, Aliens. Aliens is great. Aliens is awesome. Aliens is great. And James Cameron. It's no... Uh, but Terminator 2 is the ultimate action movie. It's got everything Perfect. you want. It's the special effects were groundbreaking and still hold up. Still are. Except for one shot. Yeah, his Where face he's, getting shot. His face getting shot leaving, up at his exiting Skynet. Skynet or Cyber Cyberdyne. Dine. Cyberdyne. And, uh, and even like those names are good. Skynet, Cyberdyne. Skynet. Uh, and it's, I don't know how he went from Skynet and Cyberdyne to Unobtainium. Because he's a, he's a madman. I think it is just a case of him being like, I'm a, I'm in a million dollar cloud. No one can, everyone just tells me my ideas are great. I, I And I really don't understand I don't. I mean, and listen. I don't. Not a huge 
James Cameron or anything, but the fact that everybody loved Avatar, I was like, what are you, are you kidding? Like, is I was not into it. Cat people walking around. I, I remember we were watching it, me and my now fiance were watching it, and they link hair and start like making out two of them. And we were laughing and we're in a full theater and nobody else was. And we're like, are we like, are we wrong? Perfume and a pig, man. People get distracted by the special effects. It's crazy. The one part in Avatar, or the one part in Avatar, I was like, well, first of all, it's like there's that whole thing of like it's a racist plot mm-hmm. that like a white man has to become this native race in order to right, save him. Right. And then there's a part where a guy in a robot suit who can, he's controlling the robot suit grabs a knife out of the robot boot, which is so funny. To That's me. awesome. <laughs> That's <laughs> really funny. <laughs> We're, this is probably like a three-hour podcast, right? This is uh, supposed to be five hours. Oh, okay. We're good. We got two more hours. No, this is great. Um, wait, any other Terminator 2 things that we need to... I, all I got to say about it is it's the best movie ever made, <laughs> and it's going to be perfect, and I'm never going to find a movie I like any better, except for that Neil, uh, the guy who did District 9. I have high hopes for him. District 9 was great. Did he make anything else? He's got another one coming out that I think is filming, and Matt Damon... Is uh, it's about the far off distant future, and it's like kind of like there's an libertarian elite. Here's one uh, that sounds awesome. I'm interested. There's one other movie that if I was a kid and I saw it like the same age that I saw Terminator Two, because I think that has to play a role in your favorite movie. Is like yeah, when yeah. you first see it. Yeah, Terminator Two is the first rated R movie I saw in the theater. Mm-hmm. And but if I saw it, did you see Attack the Block? No, I hear it's. Really you should good. watch it. It's. Awesome. If I saw that as a kid, it would be like it's it's like British sort of like uh, people on a city block and these a group of kids like fights off aliens that look awesome. It's really cool and it's really the, a, the way the aliens look awesome is is not how you'd expect them to look awesome. It's really cool. Like they got like big tits, big titties, and they grow when police officers come to them. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. Thanks so much, Connor. Is there, where can people find you on, on the internet? Let's uh, plug our cage match show tonight. We, we have plug. a cage this match show. Uh, this isn't live. This will be up. This is going to be probably three weeks after that happens. And I'm going to predict that we win or lose. What do you think? I don't know. I don't want to. I'm new to the scene. I have high hopes. I say we're going to win. So we're going right. to sweep. This, then this will air during our 10 week run. Of uh, I don't, I don't cage know. match wins, <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll see us every th- Friday at Law Firm at the uh, used to be theater, and you can go to coozhound dot com. Oh, how do you spell that? C o o z e hound dot com for for Tony Tempo stuff, videos. Tony Tempo is the name of your entourage fan character. Yeah, of my guy from Staten Island that I write as. So can people friend Tony Tempo? Uh, I don't, the way my Facebook, the way the Facebook thing works is I, I like a bunch of dumb stuff and then I comment on it. Mm-hmm. Specifically this one meme generator called fuck sensitivity. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, if I have friends, then their stuff comes up on my feet and it's not like Bacardi links and oh. stuff like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can look, friend me. I won't accept it. You won't Sorry. accept it. Just find Tony Tempo. Yeah. I, I posted on Twitter and Tumblr. Uh, backslash robot foot, which is probably a less disgusting way to find my Tumblr right. than Coos Hound. So I really regret doing that. Hashtag, hashtag terrible idea. Hashtag uh, bought a domain name when I was 19. That's awesome. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, Craig? Mm. Craig, is it? That's right. Okay. Thank you, man. But, uh, that was a beast, man. But, um, our next uh, guest beast, man. is uh, uh, beast. Seth Myers. Ever heard of it? Connor O'Malley. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, you can shake everybody's hand and go on plenty of shaking everybody's hand. Um, you, when you were on this podcast last, we watched Entourage. We did. We watched the episode where Turtle uh, got his new pair of Fuki Jamas. But Vince found out that the Ramones project isn't happening. God. <laughs> Everybody up here is like, shut up. <laughs> Um, uh, thanks for coming, Connor. Um, uh, have you watched Entourage since we, we watched it together? No. I, well, maybe. 
No, <laughs> I have not. Neither have I. I talk more about Frasier, because I also am weirdly a big Frasier. Oh, yeah? I, just, I think my mom watched it a lot, so I just, like, ended up watching it, too, with her. It's, uh, it's fucking, it's a weird show. How did that happen? I know a lot of people who actually watch that show, too, and I, I have not given, I don't, I don't think I've seen an entire episode. I think it's kind of the last bastion of, like, not a lot of people have cable, so, like, yeah. this is what we watch. But is, is it a nostalgia thing? Like, does it make you feel nostalgic while you're watching it, or for right. years, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you're, I think it's, like, a really funny show. I love it. I love, like, how farcical it is and stuff. Um, and I, I, like, watched it in reruns. Like, I didn't watch it when it was on. Like, I watched, like, the, like, it was on at, like, 11.30 or whatever, you know? Um, it was on 11.30, so I'd, like, wait up. Wait, you stayed up all the way up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever, man, you know. Uh, That's hip. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of the writers from Cheers or the creators uh, transferred over. There's some funny stuff there, guys. I don't know, and you know, it's it's about psychology and psychiatry and that sort of thing. It's a psychological comedy. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. Um, I think uh, the Vince. I've seen him twice in the last two weeks. Andrew Garnier. Yeah, I think it's. Gren, Grenier, that's how I say it. It's Grenier. the worst. He's like a bad actor. Yeah, he yeah. Well, I, I think he plays the greatest actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't like walk by me acting well. He just like, <laughs> uh, once he walked by me, once he was sitting on a, a stoop. Um, and uh, it was um, uh, also not that entertaining. Where was it? Uh, in Clinton Hill in Brooklyn, which I think it's in. Kind of weird. Place. I once made eye contact with Parker Posey. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Family Matters, uh, you know, it was a family sitcom. It was actually a spinoff from uh, Perfect Strangers. Uh, the elevator operator was a sassy black lady named Harriet. And uh, no. I will say, also, I watched Perfect Strangers with my family in reruns, and I don't remember any elevator operator, <laughs> except for, I do remember one episode where they were, like, trapped in that elevator, and it was, like, falling. She had to have been in that episode, though. Right? She was not. She was not in that episode? <laughs> I would love to, like, think, like, were the writers at all ever, like, excited to pitch these ideas? <laughs> I don't know. I, I wonder about that. Because I feel like freedom to it. Exactly. You know? I feel like I had a similar experience where I was, like, sweet spot for TGIF lineup in this particular, and then I, like, fell away from family matters and came back and just, was, what the fuck happened? To this? Exactly. Yeah. I love the logic. Oh, yeah. yeah, I love the logic of like we're shrunken down. We need somewhere to sleep, and it also has to kind of look like a bed too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we can't. Yeah, yeah, it has to. It can't just be comfortable. It's got to <laughs> resemble a, a clean <laughs> size bed. I, I also like that they provoked a the cat for that. I want. I want to know how they provoked the cat. You gotta yell pussy at him. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say like so when we were looking up family matter stuff today, my interview. <laughs> So, uh, I have a clip from the Bozo Show. Uh, I'm uh, born and raised in Chicago. And one of the things that we would do is every day at 7 o'clock, the Bozo Show would come on in the weekday. And it was an hour long. And the reason people watched it was because in the middle, they would have uh, the grand prize game, which was, you had Bozo buckets, which were like six buckets. And uh, you would toss like ping pong balls in the buckets. And, and it looked amazing. Like, they, all the cuts were perfect. They did such an amazing job of, like, making the prizes and the toys look alluring. They did, like, they randomly picked people from the audience, and it was, like, very exciting, and it was great. And it was why everybody watched the show. And then they had 55 minutes to fill. So <laughs> they would do it partly with cartoons, but then they were like, hey, what if these alcoholic clown men performed live-to-tape sketches? And we filmed it for an audience of crying children and their parents. <laughs> and none of the kids are laughing, they're not happy at all, they're just sitting there and they don't fucking understand why Bozo is talking to the other clown, Cookie, who you'll see in the clip. And they're just fun. and also another thing, none of the people in the sketches are off book, and you'd be like, okay, well they probably have cue cards. Nobody has cue cards. I think they just like loosely talk out beats and then they go out there and are constantly talking over each other and stepping on each other's lines. So it's, and on top of that, parts of the set are falling down and they're grabbing it and holding it up. <laughs> parts where Cookie the Clown opens up a door and Bozo's standing behind it and he's not supposed to be, <laughs> jumps out of the way. 
<laughs> it's the fucking worst, and it's so entertaining now. Because <laughs> they're they also sound like alcoholic Chicago cops, but they're dressed as like the shittiest, worst clown men you've ever seen in your entire life. We just have to watch it. It's horrible, but it's great. And then I'll just also say this before it starts. When you sent me this clip, it was a sketch that was six and a half minutes long. So I cut about two minutes out, and let's see how long it feels. <laughs> the boss is asking me to do. Boy, that guy never gives up. Chores, chores, chores. Just look at that list. I'll tell you. It goes on and on and on and on. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm being used. Sometimes I think people think I'm nothing but a doormat. Do this cookie. Do that cookie. What? Oh, cook? Hi, boss. Could you do me a favor, pal? I just I don't want to let you go. Oh, please. Couple of little things. Well, you're my bestest friend. Yeah. Okay, as long as I'm doing all this, I'll do a couple of little things. Okay, here's the list. There you go. Well, it's a long list. Bye. Bye. Uh. Uh. Turn it on there. Hello, friends. Hello. Do you feel used? Yes. You feel locked up. Yes. Yes. Then you are a certified <laughs> pushover. Are you tired of being pushed around when you want to do what you want? Yeah. Then get Professor Farnsworth Flanders' new book, Get Tough, and make them like it. This book has caused me enough trouble. I'm not a tough guy. I'm a nice guy. I can't be tough and make them like it. <laughs> <laughs> What a mistake I made. Boy, oh boy. Oh, guys! <laughs> 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 For those at home, uh, at the end he threw the book out the window and a gorilla came and chased him and that's how they ended. Just for the record, that's one of two endings that always happens in live to tape sketches on the Bozo show. The other one is pile of face. <laughs> oh, God. What was the lesson there? I was trying to figure out the lesson. Was lesson it is Cookie pushed? gets fucked by Bozo. <laughs> and Cookie's gonna like it. Because Cookie's a piece of shit and Bozo's a fucking user. And that's what life is. <laughs> And this is year, this is from 1990, this is year 30 of this show existing. Is yeah, right? the Bozo show, Bozo was a clown that was started in the in the 30s, it was on a record, and it was very popular, and then at the beginning of television, they were like, hey, every local station and affiliate should have their own Bozo, so that they could have kids on it and be like a local thing, and started around the 60s and the 50s, Boston had one, Philadelphia, Portland had one that wasn't Bozo, but it was based off of Krusty, the, they, they based Krusty off of it. Chicago had Bozo too, but Chicago was the longest running Bozo that existed. It started on, no joke, September 11th, 1961, and ran till 2001. Which is a joke. Which is a joke. <laughs> But it was the longest running franchise of Bozo, and it was also like the most popular. And they did two tapings every day Ugh. for 40 fucking Did you watch this when you were a kid? You yeah. watched it. Was it nightmarish? I mean, like, you I just like didn't give a shit about anything because you like, get to the fucking grand prize game. And then as soon as that happened, you turned it off. And everybody knew that. Yeah, so, well, we, we watched it every morning. My family watched it every morning before yeah. school. Yeah, regularly. And the grand prize game. My brother, you know how they had the at-home player? Mm -hmm. My brother was the at-home player. Um, yeah. So not, not to what does that mean? You, how did he so, play at home? So you, you sent your name in, and then they would pull your name out of a hat and say, Alex Pickett is the is the uh, at-home winner. So he, he gets to win all the prizes that the person throwing the ping pong balls into the cups wins. And did he win anything? He didn't win check shit. Oh. He got like a toddler. It was the worst thing that could have happened. He got a toddler coming up there. Oh, what it, when they show the audience, the kids do look miserable. They look so bad. Like so everyone is just like, oh. <laughs> well, Also, it, there was no joke, a 10 year waiting list to get tickets to the Bozo shit show. Like you would have your kid and then you'd put them on the waiting list. 
and it's all you, the parents. second you had your kid. <laughs> second you had your kid, and then after the bozo waiting list, then you'd get like a college account and shit like that. Right. Right. <laughs> you do that, then you'd set up a savings account for your child. But it's such a fucking weird, tiny, like beginning of television that should have just gone away, but it was around for fucking ever. And it's also W. It was on WGN, the Superstation. Which isn't a network, but it's also people get it everywhere, but it's not a national network. So I think it was broadcast nationally in certain parts of America, but and it was also like I grew up in that like I grew up in North Center in Chicago, which is the center of the North Side, and like WGN is in like right by there. And in high school, we would like go by where they filmed the Bozo show and get high by the river. Like hell yeah, this is so cool, man. Yeah, <laughs> fat. Fat dudes in mid grades, cheaping up. <laughs> 14 years old. That's dope. So cool, man. Did you ever attend uh, Bozo taping? No. It was. Yeah, we weren't on My parents didn't give a shit. <laughs> but that guy is probably off stage looking at a script or something. You'd think that he'd be he able was clearly to... making it up. Yeah. Oh. He clearly mm-hmm. like was not looking at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best part is like. They're just filling an hour of time. They don't give a fuck. Right, he said the same thing like four times. Yeah, he said like, but you were rude on the telephone. Also, you were rude on the telephone. <laughs> also, uh, you've been, I've been mean to you. Let me take you to the zoo for ice cream. So, <laughs> thousand <laughs> soldiers accidentally die in friendly fire. I love my I love <laughs> mistakes. Can't even tell it's real, right? Look at it. Wow. Yeah. Can I touch it? Well... It is a oh. sample model. You can go ahead and touch it. Oh, jeez. If you want to touch wow. it. Wow. That feels like real skin. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to touch it all night long, it's going to be $5,000. Oh. Oh. Now, my wife is going to be really upset with me that well. I've fallen into this trap again. Well, now, oh. you, now we have the ability to replace your wife with this beautiful synthetic. Oh, the wife, this love doll. She she could be a dirty girl. She could be a nice little. Oh boy! A lot of clients just like to have photo shoots with them. Well, oh, why? Why did I wander in here? Uh, I'm just here's. I've got an addiction to browsing I know. sex shops and sex related shops, and I am. I don't like those terms. I'm sorry. This um, is a this is a, a show a show floor. Show floor. Yeah. Is this so? This is a this show is model. Show What's model. been done to this thing? I like to think of this place as almost like a car dealership of sex. Oh well, I do not want to drive out the test unit if you get what. Well, there is a room for that. No, it's. I'm, look, I need this thing, and I'll admit it. I can smell it, baby. Oh. Ugh. Gross. It takes one to know one. Oh, do you have one of these at home? Cynthia's. Do you buy what you're selling? Yeah, I got I mean I got a little bit of a discount. Oh. Oh, so it wasn't five thousand for you. It Can was, we haggle? It's more like fourteen hundred. No, we can't. <laughs> Are you sure? Because I would, let's just just humor me on this one. Five thousand dollars, that seems a little steep. Well, mm. well I'll tell you yeah. what. 3500 and I will take your most used demo model off of your hands. This is interesting. This is very interesting. And I don't care what has been done to her hair. It can be All right, pretty well, messed up. Here. But maybe we could go 3K. 3K for your most used demo model, hair messed up as can be. Okay. All right. And I'll deal with my wife. I can promise you. 2500 and I can... Guarantee you, I will promise you that my wife will not come here to complain and try to return this she does, synthetic I will, beauty. I will flip out. I know. Uh, no girls allowed unless they, no you girl. know, want a model. I didn't see that. Oh, well, it's just a personal thing. Listen, I have a model that I'm not using anymore. So, Carolyn. Oh, oh sexy. She's got vampire teeth. Oh, wow. Yeah. I installed them myself. Woo. Yeah. Not factory installed. Custom work. Custom, baby. Custom work vampire teeth. Custom work vampire. Ooh. The vampire. And I'm thinking about getting rid of it. So how much? Hmm. What type of car you drive? A um, Toyota Corolla. Okay, so you're not you're not rolling in it. No. I'm not rolling in it, but I would be able to write a check... 
today for fifteen hundred. dollars I was just gonna say that. I was just gonna say that. She's in the trunk of my car. If you want to go take a look at her. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Let's uh, carry around in case I'm on a road trip and I got an urge. You know? <laughs> oh, I need to take. Care right. Of. So why? So Carolyn's your personal model, and yeah, you've used her on I'll, the road. I'll, I'll clean her out. You know, what is your second most used model? Because yeah. I just, it'd be like, well, you know, it'd be I'm, like marrying a friend's ex-wife, yeah, a slutty wife. Yeah, I mean, one thing if she was like, you know, it's still hot. Oh, yeah, but I'm looking for a relationship. All right, mm-hmm. I want a, I want a relationship. Well, have you seen these models? They're about four feet tall and they have big anime eyes. Big anime eyes? <laughs> anime. Oh! Oh, oh okay, sure, yeah. I see that now. They're a little bit cheaper. <laughs> they're about four. Four, four foot G's. tall, big four foot anime tall. They're, they're four foot tall for a reason. Hmm. Are you into that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know either. I'm just <laughs> testing the no, why are you? Why are you? I very well could be. Certain, because I am addicted to spending my wife and I's mutual checking account money on sex objects. Of course. I want, I was wandering by and Does I... she ever came, give it to you? Who, my wife? Yeah. Does she ever give you the business with her? Nope, it is cold, strictly conventional. Cold in the bedroom? Yeah. Mm. Well, it's an emotional need, though, for me. It's yeah. an emotional addiction to... Daddy needs to go out and play. <laughs> yeah, but... Daddy can't be stuck in the bedroom <laughs> reading a book while Mommy watches Law & Order. Well, uh, uh, Maybe he needs to get freak nasty in the kitchen. Okay, look, you don't need to give me the... You don't need to give me the sizzle. I'm sold. <laughs> I'm right. sold. I'm sold on it. I'm you sorry. Know, I just so wrapped up in the hotness of all this. I mean, I'm, is, the, I'm the luckiest man in the world. <laughs> you do. I have the best job in the world. Oh, I don't know. For me, it'd be like an alcoholic working at a brewery. Oh, wow. That'd be even better. <laughs> no, it would be, it would be terrible. I mean, I've got an emotional. This isn't healthy. Wanna, it's not healthy for me, and I know that. And I've been through therapy. This proved it clearly to me. This. Is I mean, not I know healthy. that too, but I just em- embrace. I guess I'm a Sith sex addict, <laughs> and you're a Jedi sex addict. I'm like, I, oh, okay, you know, I like sure. to think like if I could afford the plastic surgery, plastic surgery, I would like look like Darth Maul, <laughs> with horns on my head and stuff. Oh wow, real. Yeah, committing to the whole alien leather boy thing. That guy looks so cool. He does. Oh. Anyway, let me write you a check for five thousand dollars, and I'll take a new one. Perfect. <laughs> and that's our time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm starting the timer. <laughs> uh, that was uh, that was great. Uh, I'm really creepy, man. I uh, yeah, I know it was super super creepy, but I kind of feel like I don't know. The expectation for the two of us is that it it's. I would have been disappointed if we didn't get into the. Yeah, <laughs> didn't get I really, into I'm so, so glad when you were like, skin feels real. <laughs> yeah, well, because synthetic is so like. Uh, it's either like motor oil or yeah, sexual yeah. partner. Yeah, yeah, it's like the, it's so. There's something that's so like uh, the that the fact that it's artificial like makes it so creepy. Yeah. Well, I think it's just it's like it's not real, so people want to use it. Yeah. For their darkest. Like, <laughs> like, I, like, oh, I'd love to, like, treat a woman like a horrible object, but I can't. But if I made... No one will let me. Yeah. But if I made, like, a fake one, I'll fucking do whatever I want. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like that artifici- the artificiality of it, because you can't do something real. Yeah, it was... It, well, that was... I, I liked how it felt. I mean, I think that's the thing, is that, like, we're... You and I are both so aggressive about, like, if something comes up, getting to the ultimate of it. Yeah. And then just, like, getting to the point where we can be totally crazy. Like, our brains can shut off. Yeah. And we can just ride the lightning. Yeah. You know? And so... We can, I, I like the way you do that, too. I, I feel like sometimes, though, it's good, too, like, in a scene to, like, well, let's not dance around. Let's not do innuendo or anything like that. Yeah. It's actually, yeah. like... Let's talk about fucking each other, or whatever yeah. it is. And I hate watching it dance around, but I also feel like 
if that was the first scene in a show, it, <laughs> it be, might turn some people off. <laughs> it would. It would definitely alienate us from the audience, <laughs> and we would. It would be like an uphill battle. But right. I kind of like doing that. <laughs> I like the challenge of that. Of, like, of, of ushering someone into your world and then just being like, "Look, I'm not doing this to like yeah. it, it, the. If you're not doing it to like, sell out." You know, yeah. I think that's the thing is like it, there is an intensity that can really turn people off. But, but if, if you're not doing it to sell out, if you're just doing it cause it's there, it's yeah. there it and you're going to push up. it, yeah. you know, it's sort of like, yeah, there's definitely times where it's like, I'm going to bring up sex or I'm going to do this really blue thing purely because I know it'll get a laugh and I'm in the first scene. And I'm really terrified that I won't get a laugh and I won't be patient. To yeah, worry. yeah. I, well, it's like I, you know, but I think that there's, that there, yeah, there's value in playing like, as silly as that scene was. It was just we were. I feel like it was like really going after it. And it was know? a transaction scene too, which I yeah. always am like. Everyone's like, oh, don't do it. I, it's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, you know, because because I, so I think I mean because I think people get real like. Um, <sighs> Yeah, transaction scenes, like, people feel like there's no, like, there's the thing to, the most important thing to accomplish is actually exchanging money for goods, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's kind of like, well, and if that is the only thing that's going to happen, then how do we stretch that scene out to be scene length? And if that's your attitude towards it, then it's, yeah, it's not, it becomes too mechanical. I think a guy that would sell cars, he was a car salesman, and he was like, you just really get to know people. Because you, yeah. you spend like 10 hours with them if they're mm-hmm. going to buy a car. Mm-hmm. They don't leave a lot. And then you see them like three or four more times. Yeah. Like after the transaction. Well, it's and that's very, a real mapping of like, that's yeah. a real, and that, I think that's the thing. It's like you can do a transaction scene as long as you play it where you, you're, it's real. Like, yeah, I guess it, people get lost in the like, what's on the shelves rather than like yeah. who are these two people or like how do I make this funny I make this funny by by playing a denial game yeah yeah. and yeah. it's like that's not real yeah. like no jackass would sit there and be yeah. like oh I'm sorry you can't buy my product <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's stupid yeah it, it, so it's sort of like well sell them the sell them the thing and mm-hmm. if the scene is 15 seconds then you've accomplished a, a tiny scene that's, that's my things. favorite it's my favorite too when it's like how much is that? Five dollars. I'll take it. So what do go. you do? <laughs> <laughs> it's so I don't know. I find, um, yeah. I guess the more and more I do this, the more I'm like. It reminds me of. Uh, I remember I was talking to George once, and he was talking about um, being in a Turco audition for Second City, and uh, yeah, he was watching. Uh, what's his name? Bo, uh... Goldter? Yeah, Gold, Bo Goldter in it. And he was like, you know, Bo obviously was like, you know, he's auditioned like 50 times or whatever. They know who he is. He's fucking hilarious. Yeah, Bo's awesome. Yeah, and George is just like, he was just watching him in an audition purposely like do transaction scenes or like <laughs> the worst, the worst like initiations like purely just to be like Look at, like, just because he was bored. <laughs> like, he's like, look at, like, I'm going to get in the worst possible situation and I'm going to do an amazing scene. <laughs> and it's going to, like, blow your mind. <laughs> and he's, like, taking care of the people he's in scenes with. It just, like, that's always, like, way more impressive to me than, like, wow, this is a really slow, grounded show. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, that conversation has probably occurred several times. Oh, yeah. Like, well, it was fu- it was fun for me, too, because it was, like... It was it, it was easy because it's it's fun to play ridiculous people. Yeah. And yeah. so like the the idea of being in a situation where I knew exactly what I was. I was a married guy who had <laughs> a severe emotional problem and addiction to buying <laughs> sex objects. You know. And so it's like that is really simple. I can totally internalize that. Shut everything off and yeah. then get in there and try and cut the best deal. <laughs> like, still... Seem, Justify it for yeah, yourself. Yeah. Like, it was fun for me through the course of that conversation to figure out what my limits were. Like, yeah. the fact that I was willing to pay less money for a used thing, but yeah. then when it got pushed as far as he pushed it, being like, 
no, <laughs> no. And then, that's gross. Yeah. And then coming <laughs> back and being like, I'll just get a new one for yeah. the price list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I totally, that bugs me too when people are like, and I don't have a problem with scenes being like dirty or blue. I think it might be a Chicago thing where people just get so, they buy into um, it being real so much. And I'm always like, you know, I never, I never come home and like tell my girlfriend like, oh my God, you got to hear the story about this like conversation I had with someone <laughs> that's very slow and real <laughs> and grounded. I'm always like, no, you guys, this guy was jerking off on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> he shot his left from all over the bus driver. And like, <laughs> like, that's all ever, anyone ever talked about. So why would you want to watch a show of someone like... Hey, um, like, oh, it's so boring. Well, I think real, like, you know, describing it as real is like a real misnomer, though, too, because, yeah. you know, extreme situations are real as well. I think what what you're trying to seek out in improvisation is not necessarily, can, can be those most extreme moments, mm -hmm. but it, it just has to be a moment, you know, like something that yeah, you would tell us, somebody yeah. about, whether it's like, whether it's crazy or intense or, yeah. or, you, it, it, it just really has to be a moment and sort of like if real means slow and typical then it's it's not really interesting real can also yeah. be really intense like it's also important i guess the variety is what everyone's yeah. trying to watch in a show like you have a scene about that about something blue and then you have something that's like something a little bit less like that you know so yeah. everyone's not being beat over the head with it but well, and I think that, you know, the scene that we just did is like, clo it's cloaked in the extremity of, of a, a pervert who runs a, mm -hmm. a, a, a sex. Like two degrees of perverts. Like yeah. The one who's completely bought in and the other one who's like <laughs> still got no. his toe on the water. <laughs> right. He wants to go. Oh, I've got bed. a real life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like. Right on the edge of losing it all. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a ton. Of, I mean, yeah, there's a ton of extremity in that. But I think that's the thing is that like it's extremity that helps illustrate the f real feelings of yeah. like you know someone that is knows they shouldn't be doing something getting the worst advice from someone who oh, just yeah. wants to lead them down a path and they know? also are just hearing what they want to hear too yeah that guy will like totally wanted someone to like be like it's a community yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so it's like that is that's real because that's relatable like we can yeah. we can definitely experience that in what we have and it's sort of like cloaked in this thing where we kind of like are able to enjoy it and mm -hmm. like laugh at it because it's so outside edge crazy yeah. but it's not it's not just people saying crazy things it's you know people in this crazy environment that are still responding like people that have baseline needs whether yeah. it's to be a sleazy user of somebody or <laughs> to fight their addictions you know yeah it's I guess like, yeah it's just yeah I feel like People should stop saying, like, uh, keep it slow and grounded and more like, you know, just be honest to your choices. Because yeah. we both made a choice of, like, we're both perverts. Yeah, yeah. And we were honest to that choice and we didn't stray outside of it. Yeah. We had a very clear point of view. Yeah. And because of yeah. that, it was real. Yeah, and I think there was nuance. I mean, yeah. like, it's hard, I mean, it's hard to say. It, it may sound disingenuous to say that there was nuance in these two outside edge perverts. I think there was. But there was nuance, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, it, we weren't the same person, and we yeah. each had things that we had to, like, try and get each other to say or do, or, you know. Yeah, because I'll be honest, I was, I, I've watched uh, this this week, uh, My Strange Addiction, and there's a guy who's addicted to... Um, what is that? Love it. Oh god, it's this fucking great show. It's so dumb. It's like <laughs> My every episode, strange addiction. Yeah. What it, is it like on It's on like the, some cable channel. I don't know. Like like TLC or something like that. But it's all these people who are like I'm addicted to eating drywall. Or like I'm addicted, <laughs> I'm addicted to, to yeah. eating drywall. Like, I'm addicted to eating rocks. <laughs> like there's a woman who eats rocks and they like there's like another oh. guy who's like I'm on my bike for 18 hours a day. Oh, like, and he goes God. to a doctor, and the doctor's like, you need two hip replacements. <laughs> and it always ends with them going to a doctor being like, yep, the uh, your esophagus is completely ripped out because you ate rocks for 10 years. <laughs> like, it's all these fucking idiots. And they, like, get this horrible news, and then afterwards they're like, I guess I'll keep doing it. <laughs> oh, no. And there was this really, oh, like, super weird, like... 
like very weird uh, dude um, who was uh, living in Detroit and he's addicted to real love dolls. Oh my god! And he like named her and he like, dresses her. <laughs> well, I love the, the name was Carolyn. <laughs> yeah, like, it was, what an it was something. Sexy name it was something this. like Cynthia or something <laughs> like that. And he's like interviewing. He's got his arm around the doll <laughs> and he's talking. About, he's like he's talking about their relationship. <laughs> like it's real. Like they're she's actually real. Oh, like I mean, Lars and the Real Girl, which I never saw. Yeah, I haven't but, seen that either. But, but it happened in real life, so here's this ridiculous movie, yeah. m- movie that is actually a reflection of someone who's real. Oh. And, like, he's just, like, photo shoots are something we like to do. Like, oh. he's just, like, we like to do. Oh, man. And he's like, I just ordered a new model, so it's going to be a modern marriage. And it's like, <laughs> uh, oh, God. But there's this part where he's talking to a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist is like... So you, you get that this is super weird, <laughs> pretty much. And the guy's like, yeah, I guess, yeah. And then he's like, and doesn't really hurt anyone, right? And he's like, no. And he's like, well, I guess you can keep doing it. Like, <laughs> so he was really... the most successful My Strange Edition yeah. person. <laughs> like, I get Like, do whatever. Like, it's in your house. Like, I don't care. <laughs> like, you want to do this? That's fine. See, so it's stuff like that where I'm like, yeah, so... You know, that's yeah. an outer edge thing. You know, we put we we oh, we emphasize the extremes to shine light on the things that like we all kind of feel. Yeah. So I guess I, I really like people who just play on that like, like no, like my, all my, like make really bold choices yeah. like that of like going either one way or the other and it's going to be extreme. Like, yeah. Not playing in the middle, like that's always super interesting to me, but I don't know. I've just been on this kind of like crusade lately because I think it gets a real bad rap. Of, yeah, like, yeah. The kind of stuff that I like to play, and I and, and I think the problem is, is I see a lot of people, um, kind of like playing with fire. Like they're kind of new, newer people, and they don't know how to like play blue. Yeah. So yeah. they end up like doing something really like just straight up offensive and not mocking anything or like. Kind right. Of, Nothing. No intention to actually play it. Yeah. Because I think that's the thing is that like, you want to put something out there that you, you can permit yourself to play and permit other people to play. Yeah. You know, like, you don't... I mean, playing at, at an extreme, you know, playing really blue is is really fun as long as you're yeah. actually willing to play it rather than just dictate it or, like, you know... Yeah. And it's sort of like you don't... I mean, I, I love playing there. I love pulling back, like, and playing something very gentle sometimes too you know yeah. it's, it, the key for me is that I'm playing with someone who's willing to play it yeah know? that doesn't and, like yeah passively aggressively stray away from it for whatever reason they just like I get, oh this is what this is about yeah okay, this is it we're gonna it. do it yeah. you know and, and, and things can happen like yeah. allowing things to happen that's what's really you know yeah and, and like I've been kind of challenging myself lately to like write so I've been writing a lot of like solo stuff and sketches and I'm like Everything I write is like uh, three normal guys, and this one weird guy comes in and tries to <laughs> suck their dick. <laughs> Super like, like, so I've been forcing myself to like, there can't be any like perverts in this. Or rapists. I and gotta like, cut out the perverts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I've been really surprised that like the stuff that I've written that hasn't, you know like use that crutch heavily yeah has actually yeah. been really successful yeah and it's like kind of this other like wheel that i can spin now well i think that's a you know something i, I would say about you and i think something that i've always felt is that you have i mean you're so fast like you're one of the fastest like thinking and reacting improvisers and physically but and and you're so powerful you know mm-hmm. that like Show, the focus of shows tend to gravitate towards you because you're willing to do anything and push anything. And the and I think that it's like it makes a lot of great things happen, but you often also wind up setting what is happening, you know, because yeah. you're so powerful. And what I think the it was a, an out of character show I saw, the, the out of character show that I saw lately, I would agree that like. It's been really awesome to. You've always been a great improviser, but to see your your improvisation mature lately, oh, thanks, to like have have more touch within your range, you know, like the that the, the out of character show where you were the where it was Micah's 
guy. Oh, yeah. So, like, the, the general thing is, so, out of characters, there's a world that revolves around this one character that has, a, a, like, a solo piece at the beginning of the show. And Micah Sternberg was uh, this Australian guy who was married to a woman. He's an accountant. Um, and his, and Connor was playing the uh, per, physical trainer of both of those people who lived in their basement and was the actual father to, yeah. uh, his, four-year-old to, to his four-year-old son. Yeah. And, and they so had been married for seven years. Yeah, and they've been married for seven years. So obviously there was a real extreme to, uh, available to that. And the thing that was so great about it was that the most sort of wild thing was in the setup of that. And then everything that was played within it was so... Um, like emotionally real, you know, the fact that you were like cared about the kid and cared about Micah as your friend and like made me believe how that relationship could work without pushing the like, without go with having the outside edge of it being the general description and the inside of it be very real, you know, yeah. like because when Wendy tried to get you to kill him, you're <laughs> like, no, he's my best friend, and then you immediately go and tell Micah, hey, she tried to get me to kill you. <laughs> it's like that is that's a swing that is like really like just awesome to see. I thought that was really thanks, man. That's really sweet that was, of you to say. Great. Yeah, well, I mean, I probably should have told you it some other time rather than no, you, now, said, you but, said that a couple times. Yeah, I really. Yeah. Remember one time you like we were. When you first started coaching Mrs. Dad, you were talking, like, giving everyone notes, and one of the notes you gave me that I found really helpful was, like, you you play really fast, but sometimes you're, like, half a mile ahead of everyone. Yeah. Like, you, you in know. a bad way, and, like, kind of like a way of, like, I'm not, like, there there needs to be, like, you, you know, it's not, it's not a race, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, I think it's just that you, you're, you're somebody that I think, as I've gotten to know you over the years, you have so much capability and like you never need help but sometimes the people that you play with do and so that's like your bunch of weak (laughs) that's so that's like i think that's your that's the you know the thing that i that i'm interested to see evolve in you is your ability to like help other people be good yeah so Anyway, that's the dog went off. So, do you have any last thoughts that you want to? Uh, yeah, I'm sitting over here talking all high and mighty about uh, how I'm going blue, good. <laughs> but I guarantee you, 50 percent of the shows you see me do, I'm going to be doing a scene that's no good, and then I'm going to scroll down the weapons menu, <laughs> and pull out a glory hole joke, or whatever, get a laugh, and get that fucking scene in. <laughs> so I totally reserve the right to go back on everything I ever said. <laughs> That light is reserved. <laughs> Thank you very it's much, man. Great. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I, okay, so this is... Um, Jesus. I mean, he's kind of he's kind of pressed for time. We've got a paid guest that's, that's sort of an infomercial, I guess, kind of. You know, it's like... I don't really got, know. I don't know what you want to call it, but this well, is all you. He, um, he paid me money to, like, come on the podcast us. and... Yeah, us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll... You know, I'll send you. <laughs> if you guys, are, I, um, if you guys, are, this is not something I want to do. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Joseph. Hey, how's it? Hey, fellas, how's it going? Wow, thank you for that intro. Oh my God, could it, Jesus, Jesus Christ, can be less interested over here. What? Paid you fifteen hundred dollars to come on here. Don't say that. I could have fifteen hundred dollars cash to come on here. <laughs> you know, it's an ad. We're but we're excited to have you, man. Could you pretend? Yeah. Could you maybe pretend? You know, to be a little into it. I'm. I'm excited. I'm Brandon, excited. Brandon I'm loves sorry. it. I've been Brandon, teaching Brandon a lot of times. Improv. Brandon knows you. I don't. We've been uh, doing Matt private improv classes. Yeah, private, oh really? Yeah. Yeah. One on. Yeah. <laughs> one on one improv class. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. With uh, Quavo too. Quavo. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wait, Quavo? Yeah. Quavo? Yeah, he's... he's <laughs> I've, I taught him a class. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so... Does that get some... That gets your juices going there? Yeah. I mean, I've <laughs> never done improv, but I've thought about it. <laughs> well, it's just like, whose line is it anyway? It's just that you like, never seen yeah, that. Yeah, you like whose line is it. <laughs> Sorry, I am, yep. uh, I'm, I'm so ill. I'm very, very... I'm not doing well. What's wrong? Yeah, you don't look... You, you hear it in my voice. Maybe I look a little gray. You've been yeah. coughing on yeah, yeah, yeah. every... Gray You've is been the right walking color. around this room coughing I'm having the hardest time finding a place here in L.A. to live. It's honestly, it's very hard. And um, there's the uh, earthen banks of the L.A. River. Uh-huh. You could just go down there and set up a tent. 
You've been... Yeah, I mean, I've been you, down there. You I gave think me, that, you gave me $1,500. Yeah, well, that's what I had saved up. And how do you think I could save that much been, money? You think I got a million dollar you know, condo rent, or something? Rent and, money, Tyler. Uh, that's a, you could get a place for 1500 I mean, for a month. But I want. I'm. I'm long. You know. I'm. I'm. Uh. I, I watched up in the air. So I said. I'm not. I don't want to have a apartment. The LA River isn't <laughs> super clean. There might be. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm finding that out the hard way. I. I got a. I think I got some sort of river virus. <laughs> Jesus. Man. Yeah. So. But take. So anyway, my name is Tyler Joseph. Uh, 38 years old, from Villa Park, Illinois. For the people, because this is a podcast, a radio. People can't see. Yeah. What I look like, you see, I'm also, I'm, yes, I'm cis, yes, I'm white, but I had to come out to my parents as an improv guy. I said, Mom mm. and Dad, I like improv, and they said, that's not normal, and I said, I know, I'm weird. <laughs> anyway, um, I've taken the same entry-level improv class at Second City in Chicago um, f- uh, 15 times. 15 and, times? That's... Yeah, they won't let me go past that. Right. It's a prestigious. But that's school. a lot. That's a lot of experience. Yeah. You've taken one on one. I got, but I got, it. I got. Uh, that's a mis- cause they call it class A, not class A. One. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but I got kicked out was, uh, yeah. of the improv community. Kind of me tooed a little bit. Oh. Um, but it wasn't anything. I, I was doing this- a scene. I was doing a scene, and I cut a woman's ponytail off, <laughs> in the middle of the scene. Okay. With because I was deep in character and I didn't even remember. Yeah, doing that's it. not even that's not sexual. Yeah, I mean, so we'll talk about this later, Brandon. So I packed up all my crap and I came out to Holly Weird. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. And um, I drove uh, I drove my '95 uh, Ford Explorer out here. Mm-hmm. Died about 15 freaking times on the road, <laughs> but uh, I uh, I came here and um, yeah, I started up my own. Uh, improv school congrats man i'm I'm glad we we we're giving you a platform to that's what you're here to talk about talk about it talk about that talk about you know uh anything you guys want to talk about well why don't you uh tell us about the school that's what we're here to do why don't you get tell us a little bit about the school and stuff we got do we got i know firsthand we do got to do the show eventually can i I, do you have the either of you have a phone charger yes okay can i can i like have it um I, I have fine. one that you could have. It, I have yeah. one that you could have. You is need it one. A, is it Apple one? Yeah. I, Android. Do you have an Android phone charger? I could I have some I could probably put something together. I have like um I have a free portable one that was given to me. Like a free. Wow. Some yeah. sw- a, sw- a swag. <laughs> yeah. Did you get swag at a party? Yeah. That's you could have that though. For like I mean, the I feel suits, like the river suits rap party or something? Yeah. It's kind of similar to that. But you could I could give you one after the show. I would love that, yeah. Oh my God! I saw Steven Tyler today, from Aerosmith. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in a Chase Bank ATM kiosk. Oh, the one. I'm... Yeah, yeah. And I went up to him. I said, wow. "Steven, I'm such." A... I said, I, "Well, first of all, I looked over and you can't see my face on the pie." I go, what? Oh my God! That's Steven Tyler. And then I freaked out on him, and I went up to him, said, "Steven," and he was at the ATM, and he turned yeah. around, he had a concealed carry on him. Pulled out a firearm, put it right in my face, and said, "I'll put a hole in your head." Jesus Christ! Said, Stay right. I'm I'm crapping myself, uh-huh. literal crap coming out of my ass into okay. my pants. Yeah. Uh, and Stephen Stephen looks at me, and then he goes, "Name your favorite song." And I go, "Pink." And he's like, "That's mine." And then he shakes my hand. Oh. And I said, "Thank you very much, sir." And he said, "You're welcome." And then he uh, he took off. That's really sweet. Wow. Yeah. Did you? Feel like the improv skills that you learn and teach helped. Yeah, I teach the a, gun. I, yeah, the gun point scenario. Yeah, because if you, yeah, I teach I teach a, a specific form of improv that's um, it's based on whose line is it anyway. Okay, Are you guys familiar with that? Yeah, which I'm trying to get an audition to be in the next whose liner. Is it? Is it still on TV? It's it's on the CW. Yeah, okay, it back. yeah. Okay, Aisha Tyler's hosting. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Drew uh, Drew had a. <laughs> Drew couldn't be there. Something happened. I don't know. Okay, Drew, Brandon. Why don't we? I'm sorry. I um. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, but I have five minutes. I do. Oh wanna, my god. I mean, what is the deal with the CVSs out here? I've been kicked out of every one I go into. <laughs> what are you doing in there? I'm just. I I spent about two or three hours in there, and they'll tell me I gotta leave. <laughs> what is the deal with these California CVSs? I don't know. I don't know, know, man. I don't know man. Were you cutting off any ponytails in there? Any? I was well. No, I was looking. Uh, you know the s- summer aisle that they have. 
they don't have a lot of that stuff in Villa Park. Mm-hmm. This is the lawn chairs and the charcoal and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's some, uh, you know, women I was following around the store. That Okay, that sounds... Okay. But I was just trying to... Uh, I'm just a player. <laughs> He's just a player, Jack. It's understandable. So yeah. I've I've been doing these improv classes with Tyler. Yeah, why don't you tell us about your one on one? Tell us about your class. Oh, all yeah. right. Here's how it goes. Two actors will step on stage. They will begin to uh, improvise a scene. At any time, an actor from the back line can clap their hands and yell. Freeze! That actor comes out and tags the other actor out, assumes the exact same physical position, and starts a new improv scene. So all we need to get started is a uh, suggestion of anything at all, and I, I'll I'll do I'll do an improv scene for you guys. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Because I, I specialize in solo uh, improv. Oh. Okay. Yeah, they're just by myself. Uh, barbecue. Joker. Here we go. <laughs> uh, hey. Uh, Hey, Commissioner Gordon, uh, where, is, where do you think Batman is? Uh, 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 me, Commissioner Gordon, man, get away from me. <laughs> I want you out of my house. Oh, any any time that can, uh, the Batman will be here soon. <laughs> what the heck is that? Oh, no, it's the Batman. Uh, uh, Rachel! Uh, <laughs> barbecue. I'm sorry? Barbecue. Are they at a barbecue? barbecue? Scene. I'm sorry. What did you say? I said, are they at a bar- barbecue? I was just giving you You're a You're lucky I don't, I don't jump over this goddamn table and knock your head off. You're lucky I don't put a hole in your skull. Are you still in... No, I said character? scene. Scene means yeah, over. You said scene. Okay. I was just saying barbecue. You're supposed to be at a barbecue. So I thought... I think... I thought I'm going to put a hole... I'm going to... I was I was, I was waiting. At, I was waiting. What the heck is this guy's deal, Brandon? I know. I just... I, I know. I was, I was like, I was being patient. I was like, there yeah, Brandon's a good improv a student. Yeah. Sorry. I've learned a lot from Tyler. I'd have never done improv. Just thought. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. Should I clap next time? Clapping is good. You know, what's better when the audience goes. <gasps> <laughs> that's what I people. Mm-hmm. That's what's interesting about me. People. Yes. People love to laugh. People love to clap. But I like to <gasps> gasp, gasp. Yeah. And uh, did I. We're having a workshop uh, on the second floor of Bodybuilders Gym on Hypernia. Hyperion. What is it? Hyperion. I don't know the heck these streets called. Okay, I'm not from here. <laughs> it's uh, it's so uh, it's it's weird. I'm driving around all day. Most of the day, I'm driving around. I'm like, oh my god, that's a location from Wild Wild West, or oh my god, they shot uh, Bob's Burgers there. Or, oh my god, what the <laughs> heck is it? I'm just having the time of my life out here. You love it. I love it. It's uh, it's the best. I'm running into. I'm trying to. I'm trying. Oh, I'm trying to run into Jim Carrey on the street. I'm really trying really hard. Yeah. Because I would love to just say, I'd love to shake his hand, look him straight in the eye, and say, "Your artwork is what gets me through this administration." <laughs> Every night before I go to bed, I say, what the heck? President Cheeto is acting uh, <laughs> weird. He's weird. He's weird. He's not He's normal. Weird. But can't argue with the stock market. <laughs> you like I'd it? like to see you yeah. try. Yeah. <laughs> you with the stock market, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. So I, you have a school. You got a, when's the next workshop? Uh, it's Sunday... At two, uh, by the ellipticals in the second floor of Bodybuilders Gym. Is yeah. this? Because I was just gonna. I'm sorry. I was gonna ask. I mean, you have the studio, but you don't live anywhere. So it's, it's a gym. Are you a member of the gym, or? Um, I have a day pass. Okay. So you meet. We're we meet. That's in the where gym. I shower. Okay. <laughs> so it's. I have a car. I live at the river. And I need a place to shower, so I no no, no that's totally mm-hmm. yeah. Everybody's been through you know. Show up to town, you're kind of roughing it for a little bit, for sure. Um, but the class on, is at on his feet. Absolutely, and I wasn't. If anyone being is listening, if anyone is listening, please give me just water, food, anything. <laughs> I need help. I mean, I I've been I I paid you fifteen hundred. To, for these improv classes And then I gave it back You gave it back to yeah, me To, to go do on the, the podcast. podcast Wow But to be fair I thought that you were 
I thought this was going to be WTF. I thought Fair. you worked for yeah uh, Mark Marin. Oh, mm-hmm. it's I, a little I really, different. I really. I, I mean, mean I have the improv. I don't, I don't blame. I don't blame. I t- said that I had a podcast, and you assumed that it was. W- I was I, the only for podcast Mark I know. Marin. Yeah, I get it. Oh, yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah. That's I don't listen. His, to, I don't. I don't know how pod. I don't. There's I a lot. There's more than one podcast. I listen to FM. That's radio. not like in his yeah. name. Like he, it's not. You know. He's and the it's king a, it's of, kind of it's like a radio show but on the internet. There's a lot of them. Yeah. It's not just WTF. What about Howard Stern? He also has a podcast, I think, too. Maybe his radio show is is there a podcast version? I don't know. It might be. I'm a man cow guy. Man cow. Yeah. Cow classic. Is now. Cow classic Q and a one. Yeah. I saw him on the street once. I said, Man cow, please. I see I'm just, I'm always because I'm on the street all the time. You're networking. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a lot of people say, Oh, you don't have a home. Well, I'm networking. While you're at home sleeping watching the latest episode of Strange Things, I'm on the street <laughs> talking to uh, Robin Williams. Right. R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Robin. So, tell us a little bit about the school, man. I'm very, I'm very curious. Well, it's uh, it's mostly what happened. So I'll do it. So I've taken. So it's it's specializing in doing short form improv games by yourself. Okay. So you don't need. So it's kind of like a combination of stand up, short form improv, long form improv. Yeah. And uh, yes, if UCB is listening to me, I know that you guys are trying to steal this, but you won't be able to. Uh, and I am their new in competition, um, and uh, I'm trying to start a, a high school that's just for improv. That's just, hmm. uh, and I, I'm trying, I'm talking to the mayor of Los Angeles and make a law that you have to take an improv class once a year for smog reasons, tack it onto one of those smog bills. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, we just meet in the second floor of the gym at Hypernia's by the old school workout machines. And, uh, we just, I run you through games. I run you through exercises. Um, I'll touch you in the scene to push you to go somewhere that you're not comfortable with. I'll get in your head. I'll uh-huh. make you feel crazy and weird. I'm just like, <laughs> have you seen whiplash? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like the, uh, uh, I'm like the farmer's insurance guy in that, uh, on acid on steroids. <laughs> so I'll, yeah. I'll just, I'll, I'll scream at people for f- have, a full two have, hours. You have classes specifically for women. Yes. Uh, women's object work. What is it? What, I'm sorry. What is that? I teach women improv. This the this is one I'm, of your class. I'm, is this the thing you're talking about this whole time, or is I'm this so like a woke? I got class? kicked off of an airplane once. <laughs> okay, and that's why I can teach women how to do improv. What happened? <laughs> I just was plane. saying. I just was saying. Oh my god! This plane <laughs> is just. What the heck is going on? <laughs> this. Pl- I just kept saying. You need to you need to examine that pilot. I kept saying it over and over again, yeah. and they kicked me. Uh, they landed in uh, Kansas, and they kicked me off the plane. But yeah, and uh, yes, if you're asking, yes, I date my students. I didn't. I neither of us asked that. Yeah, I didn't ask that. Well, you know, have you you've done this before in the past? Uh, yeah, I've lived with, uh, that's, I, I moved, I'm 38 now and I moved out of my parents when I was 34 into one of my students. She was living with her parents at the time. So I was living in her parents' basement in Schaumburg and she was 20 and yeah, it was just, you know, look, um, she would bring me. The parents didn't know I was in the basement, so she would okay. like come down and like bring me like salami sandwiches <laughs> and popcorn, and I would eat eat the salami sandwiches and popcorn, and then talk to her about, "Oh my God, you have to see this episode of SCTV. It's insane what they did," and she was like, she liked that a lot, and I was very sick a lot of the time, and <laughs> she kind of. Uh, she developed she started producing breast milk <laughs> and she would feed me breast milk in the basement and then her father discovered me and he thought I was a homeless person and I bit him and he kicked me out Tyler um 
I could cut. I'm gonna cut this out, but um, no, like a full. I'm from Chicago too. Yeah, just like um, f- just advice. Like I feel I'm not like from Chicago. I'm from Villa Park, and Chicago wishes it was Villa Park. Okay, I'm from the uh, area, but uh, I'm right by L- the jewelry exchange here, in Elmhurst. In L- I've been in LA a few years. I uh, I wouldn't like um tell people about the dating the students like it. So just do it and not say anything. If I would not do that either, but definitely don't tell people right away that you're doing it. It's like, cause at, at, in terms of advertising, cause Why? This, you want to, this is kind of an ad. They just, you know, I just don't think you should, it, it would rub people the wrong way here. I don't want to teach those people if it rubs them the wrong way. I, you could do it. I mean, it's just, I mean, that's just my advice, but I'm going to, I'll cut that out. Don't worry about it. Leave it in. I don't care. Okay. I hope someone sues me. I'm in a bunch of lawsuits. Wait, is right that now. how that? How did that relationship end? I bit her dad. Um, mm-hmm. Her dad uh, was an executive at Renta Center, so he's very powerful. Yeah. And uh, he got some of his goons together. Um, Jesus. They, yeah, they beat my ass. <laughs> These union guys? No, they were just guys from the neighborhood other executives one was an executive for boeing another it was just i got my ass beat by a bunch of corporate executives rainex is down there too right yeah Yeah. and uh benny hana oh wow steve aoki's dad dad. yeah yeah steve aoki can you give can you give the intro i'll i'll put in a good word yeah please please oh i haven't taken a good shit in about two weeks i'll tell you that i mean jack's got a jack's got a great great, i think somebody's in um, the bathroom i don't think any i'm looking over nobody's in the bathroom that's all that's all tyler because i i think okay yeah thanks yeah this is stuff you want to there's a there's a there's a there's a shower in there Um, oh my god that would could i look at all these couches jack do you have any granola bars i might have something can i just see a picture of your parents um Brandon, dude. I met Brandon's mom. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I kissed her on the cheek. You, soprano style. You guys good, are you guys friends, Brandon? What's that? You guys know? Me and Tyler? Yeah. Well, I mean, we've been taking w- these one-on-one classes for a while. I thought it was for girls. You kind of develop a friendship. No, no, no. Those, I mean, that's Brandon's, separate. Brandon's that's fluid. Separate. Uh, I'm kind of caught up on the. That's the, the object. Improv, work what is the for improv women for women class? class. What is it's just uh, me and I try to get as many women as I can in a room, and I just kind of I like I make them like walk around and feel the space. Do you have like a female instructor that works with you? Is this kind of like a, a feminist? I mean, I'm angle? every every there's a female instructor inside of all of us, and mine yes. is more so. Yes. Yes, King. Yes, King. Go off, King. So I and I yeah I've. I watch, you know, I've seen feminist movies and stuff. I watched mm-hmm. uh, First Wives Club and yeah. stuff like that. So I know what it's like to be a woman. Mm-hmm. And I just have them walk around. I said, walk around, feel the space. Walk in, do a character walk, do a character walk. And then yeah. I turn off the lights. And then, um, then uh, you know, the lights are off and, and they're walking around. And, uh, <laughs> and they don't know what's going on. And I turn the lights back on, and I, I make them just, you know, do some scenes. <laughs> what was that? You turn the lights off? Yeah, for them to... It's called a blind character walk. Okay. What are you... So, like, are they doing... They're doing characters? This isn't easy for me. I'm in debt. <laughs> I'm about $25,000 in debt right now. Jesus Christ. Yeah. For just for moving out here, okay? <laughs> You spent twenty five thousand dollars. Yes. Here? What did you spend that on? <laughs> moving truck. <laughs> box. Does it have anything to do with these lawsuits? No, I, I mean, yes, I'm being sued by a couple of women in Chicago. There we go. Who think that I uh, I masturbated in a dark room while they were walking around talking <laughs> in character, which I would never fucking do that. Because I can't even come if I try to masturbate. I have to. I can only come if I'm having sex. It's a problem that I have. <laughs> if I want to fucking, if I want to jerk off, I go out and I, I talk to a woman. I don't jerk off. That's disgusting. It's that's like, that's not you know, it's gay. What do you want me to do? Touch my own penis? No, I don't even do that. I lay <laughs> over the toilet and I piss. 
Is that how you jack off? No, I don't jack off. I don't fucking okay, jerk, you off. Don't jack off. It's gross. But when you want, I plank on the toilet. When you want to jack off, you when I talk piss. to a woman or when okay. I piss, I don't touch my prick. Oh, I mean, Brandon, you're kind of, I feel like your... you're skipping over like some. Okay. You know, you yeah. said. There's some he alarming things being and, said here. Look, I yeah. just, uh, I just think. I'm like not. surprised you're not. No, I don't. Th- I, I haven't taken is. I we're taking one on one classes you, for guys. Yeah. What was that about we're jacking doing, off? You go talk to a woman. I go try to have. I try to kiss a woman every day. <laughs> okay. Every day I try to kiss a woman. I don't jerk off. I try to kiss a woman every day. All right. Um, Do you know that legally they can't make you take down your tent? On the sidewalk No I didn't know that There's a court case And that's kind of why I was deciding between Denver and LA And I said I saw that And I was like Yes Okay so um, <coughs> Your uh, Improv Improv class For women That your ob- Object What is it Object what? work Object work Miming I guess you could call it Miming <laughs> <laughs> Object work for women. You're going to be teaching this workshop on um, August. Just every day. Well, every day. Every day. Every day. And here's the thing: bodybuilders gym. Body. Well, the object work class. Um, that's uh, is actually. I was wondering. This would be a a good spot. Yeah, this This is honestly like a really good location. Let's actually talk about that. Did you need to use the bathroom? I was actually thinking. Did you need to use the bathroom? I'm working up something. Yeah. You could go ahead. It's right there if you wanted to. Okay, but guys, please don't do a prank on me. Okay. okay? All right, so... Um, Brandon, are you fucking kidding me with this guy? Wait, I gave him $1,500. He gave me Dude, are you fucking... Did you hear it? Some it's of that called, shit he's it's called paying it forward. I w- for any listeners, female listeners, I do not think it's a good idea to sign up for that class. I mean, I wouldn't I feel like we need to give a dis- you to or. understand. I, You're not a comedian. You know, I don't think it has anything to do with comedy. No, I mean this guy. Like I, I feel like I've. I don't think that's. I think think I've learned a lot from Tyler, and I think that you should uh, let him sleep on one of. You have multiple couches. You have multiple couches. Let him, let him just let him just crash here for a little bit. Let him teach a class. Absolutely not. Don't fucking say that on the air. What? What'd you say? I I can't crash here. No. Crashing. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yeah. You love that show. Yeah, it inspired me to move to L.A. <laughs> it's a, a good show. It's LA, a good show, LA, man. Show. Good show. He Well, he's I, I, L.A.'s taken, so I said, I'll, or New York's taken, so I went to L.A. New Plus, York's I don't taken? like, I don't, 9-11. I don't, I don't. Yeah. It's a, Could kinda, happen again. Yeah, well, it's a, that's technically a battleground. New York mm, and it's yeah. everybody that lives there is in a war. Yeah, terror. LA has had zero nine eleven. Zero zero terrorist attacks because yeah. ISIS is straight up fucking scared of LA. Mm-hmm. California true. love. Have you heard that song? <laughs> yeah, of course. Everybody loves that here. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> that song is awesome. Yeah, so you're gonna you're gonna crash at Jeff. I so our we have guests coming to stay, but I do I just realized I have celebrity. I guests? do have some camping gear I could give you. You could let you borrow. I have instead. camping gear. I mean, what do you think I am? I, would, I mean, I could uh, something. What do you else. think I am? What do you think he is, Jack? You better say cutie. <laughs> you're cutie. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I um yeah you know I I just want to teach people improv women improv. I feel like you're been specific you're like about hung that. up on this. What do you? What yeah, it's just a little weird to me. Yeah, you're pretty hung weird. up on this. Brandon, deck. I'm surprised you're. He teaches. He teaches classes for everybody. Okay. We've been taking one-on-one classes in his car. Yeah. Where I make Brendan, I make I say, okay, Brendan. Um, I make him like say like, let's do a scene. We can do. I can have you guys do a scene. Oh, let's do a scene. Yeah, let's yeah. do a scene, Jack. This will be fun. You, I can coach you okay, through a scene. This will be fun. I'll let's do it. Let's do a scene. Okay, so uh, we need a, a location that can fit on the stage. <laughs> um, so this will be a uh, Starbucks. Okay. Starbucks. Love yeah. Starbucks. And um, you need a character. Brendan, you can be uh, uh, Heath Ledger Joker. Okay. Oh, what the hell? And you are Jared Leto Joker. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. 
So, um, and your suggestion is uh, Jim Carrey. <laughs> Um, okay. Um, but we're ordering Starbucks. Start, start the season. Okay. You're okay. Do yeah. not do, don't, don't tell me what you're going to just do it. Okay. Cause the Jared Leto Joker. Just do it. Just fucking start outside. Start. And I'm like, no smoking. Why what are so you doing? Serious. In character. What are we okay, talking about? Yeah. Um, why so serious? Hey buddy. Um, what brings you around these parts? I'm, um, I'm a barista. It's me, the real Heath Ledger Joker. Wait, no, I. It's okay, me. It's uh, me. I guess I'm not. I, I hey, thought I was the. Hey. Hey, how hey, you doing, what if, pal? Uh, what if? Uh, how you doing, pal? I didn't like that other guy too much. I thought I was Heath Scene. Ledger Joker. Scene. Can um. Do you know what Jared Leto Joker is? I haven't seen that one yet. I'll be oh, honest with you. You haven't seen Suicide Squad. I've only heard so the soundtrack. This is, if somebody Dude. gives you a suggestion. You have to sit and you don't know what it is. You have to go, what? I don't know what that is. I, and you kind of, you kind of break them. How did lot, we do yeah. in the improv scene though? We did. You cut us uh, off. Keep your day job. <laughs> I don't think we really even say. got a chance. What's that? I don't think I really, we really got a chance to shine. Oh, you're victim now. What's wrong with that? Your victim. Yeah. You, oh, oh, I Jack, could never. Are you a victim yeah. now? I mean, I'm yeah, just curious. Choosing to be like you have a, choosing yeah. to be. Okay. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no, it didn't work out right for me. Go Wait, out and get was... it. Go out and get a job. <laughs> Tired of this crap. These people walking that around. Really good. Eh. You know, my dad my yeah, my dad was police chief of Villa Park, Illinois. Yes, he holds a record for most days in a row of firing his weapon. <laughs> and I got kicked out of the Coast Guard for shooting turtles. <laughs> but did I let any of that stop me? No. No, you I, I'm in, glad you guys you are thinking it's funny. I'm glad you guys school. think it's funny because it's my fucking life. Honestly. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> and I'll tell you another thing. The Great Lakes mm -hmm. completely open to attack from all sides. It's our greatest natural resource. Yeah. And President Trump, if you are listening, please, 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 Jerry Seinfeld, anyone, if you're listening, <laughs> protect the Great Lakes. Yeah. How long? Yeah, how long did? How long did the? Um, What's that? How long did he pay for? I mean, I for think the, for the next month. Yeah, for the next month. He's yeah. Well, he's right? crashing. He's gonna be crashing here. Mm. I'm the third. I'm the third guy. I'll do. Uh, well, show me the thing. Uh. So okay. Um. Hi, my name is Tyler Joseph, 511. Uh, represent itself. <laughs> I'll be performing a monologue from The Dark Knight. Here we go. You see, you're, uh, I know why you guys like to have your little meetings in broad daylight. It's you're scared of the Batman. Enough from the clown. Oh, yeah, I know why little Gamble over here is scared to see his grandma. Uh, do, do you, uh, and then the other guy gets up. You want to see a, a magic trick? Put the pencil right here oh yeah, I'm not joker. I want to hear him out okay uh, I kill the Batman is what I say oh ho, 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 why you even suggest well if you're gonna do anything don't do it for free uh, you say nice suit hey nice suit you ought to know you bought it <laughs> um yeah uh, so I'm gonna, uh, and then uh you say enough from the clown. Enough from the clown. Louder, brother. Enough from the clown. <laughs> then I stand up. I got the, the grenades. Yeah. <sighs> Call me. And I got the Joker card. Call me. Joker card. And then I, I walk out the room. <coughs> I, think, I think you've at least earned your spot uh, here. Everything burns. That's another right. line from yeah. that movie. Everything burns. <laughs> That Brandon, you have a house too. I've got you. Got you don't more, even have roommates. Got more, he doesn't have roommates. You've got more space. I've he been. Have I've, roommates. I can't go back to his building. Why is that? I got into an argument with one of his neighbors. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure you could sort it out. No, it's you know because they had an Obama sticker, and I started. I was trying to cu carve it off their car. <laughs> oh, wow. I thought you were a resistance guy. I am a resistance guy, but I'm like, Obama's done. Get that off your car. Put resistance on there. So I started carving it off 
with a, a razor blade that I carry with me, and they came out. I said, "What are you doing to my car?" I said, "Excuse me, it's 2016." Oh my god, I'm so si- actually it's 2018. 2016 can go f itself. Is that? You, do you have anything to do with all the Hillary spray paint I've seen around? Yeah, I've been. Uh, I think that. Uh, yeah, I want Hillary to run Paramount. <laughs> the Paramount yeah. Network. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. What's that? Just remembered. Uh, you okay? You all right? My son. <laughs> what? I have a son. <laughs> It's his birthday today. Oh my god! There's still, it's still, it's no, early. Oh no, no! Fuck! I forgot to call him. How old is he? I'm sorry. How old is he? He's 19. <laughs> Jesus. Or no, 20 now. Jesus Christ. Tyler, I've never called him on his birthday. Brandon, why you? Tyler, it's fine. It's fine. Don't fucking touch no, me. I, I was just trying to help. I. Why don't you call him? <coughs> I'm a call. It's 2 p.m. I don't have minutes on my phone. You could use my phone. You no, know, he would. Uh, legally, I can't. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's not call him. Let's not call him. Yeah. yeah. So this is a restraining order. All right, man. You know, well, you know, thanks for thanks for coming on. Thanks for having. Thanks for everything. Yeah. We actually taught. have another. Yeah, for, no, thank I, you for everything. I mean, you've like, have you me. seen? Yeah, have you seen like improvement in like your Snapchat stuff? <laughs> My Snapchat stuff. That's what we were doing because Brandon's trying to. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> branch into Snapchat. I'm not. I'm not trying to branch into Snapchat. He keeps saying that. Okay. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, thank you for coming on. We have another guest coming. Who? Uh, yeah, I don't think anybody yeah, knows. D- DJ Doug Pound. You know him? DJ, like rock and roll DJ? Doug, Doug Loose and Hot. Okay. Yeah. But do you, maybe do you think, uh, like, you think you'll ever have, like, um, you know, uh, Jim Carrey on? Maybe. If you have Jim Carrey on, please let me know, and I okay. will show up, and I will dress exactly like him, and it'll be so, it'll blow his mind. Oh, he'll yeah. Be like, what the heck is going I on? I think he would appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine if I had the mask on? That would be pretty funny. Yeah. Remember when the bad guy put the mask on and he was more mean? Yeah. yeah. But then the dog put the mask on and he was actually goofy too. <laughs> like what would happen if Trump wore the mask? Wow. What would happen? Yes, yeah, uh, Donald Trump. Yeah, this is my Donald Trump. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes, Donald, Donald Trump, Trump wearing the mask. Yeah. It's me. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I'm Donald Trump wearing the mask. Or uh, I just tweeted Kofifi, and I'm a stable genius. Uh, small hands, orange Cheeto. Uh, yes, yes. Russia, no collusion. Uh, Donald Trump yeah. wearing the mask at Starbucks. Uh, yes, I'll have a grande frappuccino, please. I'm Donald oh, Trump. Yes. This is my mask. Uh, and would the mask even be like? Would it be green or orange? <laughs> oh, wow. It would probably be orange, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, people, I'm still giving him a shot. <laughs> okay, yeah. So oh, wow. Should we, yeah. Um, yeah, any, I guess, you any, any plugs? plugs before? Uh, just look into Timothy McVeigh. Uh, look into a lot of, like, the Turner Diaries, if you read. That's an, actually an interesting book. Um, I'll plug, I'll be walking up and down Sunset Boulevard. Um, just, you mm-hmm. know, looking to run into celebrities. Because it covers a lot of ground. Sunset Boulevard. Long, yeah, it long zips street. and zounds and ding, ding, dong, ding, dong, ding, dong, ding, dong, ding, dong. It goes around. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking forward to The Lion King coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Can't that's wait. A good, yeah, that's a good positive ending note. I'm excited about that, too. Remember, oh, remember good movies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm 38, but I'm a 90s kid. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. So I like uh, Jurassic Park, Fast Five. <laughs> you should watch out with these these little vape sticks oh yeah he's pointing at the drool yeah yeah i uh someone a woman tricked me into vaping something it was a very harsh chemical i think it made me sick oh yeah yeah i was down by uh was down by the river in this what did the vape look like it looked like one of those but then i hit it and i just uh, it like burned my throat oh bad yeah and then oh. she laughed, and I think it was, there was bleach in it. 
<laughs> Jesus. So I think I vaped bleach, yeah. Oh. You got to be careful down by that river, man. It's definitely, you go down there, you're on your own. Nobody, Nobody's looking out for you. There's no PC squad walking around. Tough, no, there's no geek town. squad. <laughs> yeah. Remember geek squad? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, geek I remember squad. the geek squad. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any um like Italian bread? I could probably find you something to eat, man. Okay. You want to hit the fridge real quick? If I could just get a loaf of bread. I could get you a loaf of bread. And um if not, we could go to the CVS. Peanut butter. Yeah. I can't go to CVS. I'll go I, in there I got for kicked because they, go, they, they black they blacklisted me at the CVS. Like you know how casinos you can get blacklisted. Yeah, they have the same thing at CVS. We'll figure something out. So I was following women around the CVS for too long. Oh, sorry, hoity toity. But I'm not, I'm like so pro women stuff. You're so pro women stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a weird guy. I'm normal. You're not a weird guy. You're normal people. Women should take your uh, your. Brandon, class. I don't know if we should co-sign that, but he paid us. You have to. What the heck? Oh my god! You guys see the V twenty two Ospreys flying over LA? Yeah. That was the best damn I freaking life. I would love to be on one of those. <laughs> um, Tyler Joseph, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you thank for coming you for out. Coming man. on. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll walk you out. I think I'm gonna chill for a bit. <laughs> I think um, you let him chill for a bit. We can. Um, I'll pause it, but I think I'll walk you out. I'll walk you out to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm gonna cut yes. it. Yes.